We'll see. <laughs> test, test. One, two. Yeah. So get your um your other window open. Mm-hmm. We may have to, we'll figure it out. We'll see if. Yeah, it was a delay. <laughs> we'll figure it out here. Here, jump to your other. Uh, okay. I feel like that uh, TikTok. Oh, I wish I was you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Is that a yes? Is that a confirm? They can hear us? Hear us. Bark once. Uh, Jared and I. And streaming five or ten seconds. So let's see. Nervous. Is you know we're. Here with us, guys. We'll figure it out. Must be. I feel like we could if we had to. We'll see if this is any better. You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if the stream from the platform is mm -hmm. worse than just straight through YouTube. Seems like that would be it. That seems fine. <clears throat> sure. It says duplicate stream. No, not my free pit. Sex out of that. That's the one you want. Somebody, oh. somebody says way better, much better. Really? Did you fix it? I don't know. Better now. Better now. It's better. Okay. All right. Keep this. Get. If it's getting better, what did you do? You just reset the Wi-Fi. Oh, we're getting better now. The, dro the droopy. <laughs> Can you hear me now, Robert? Screen's a little choppy, but who know. cares? Can you hear me now? It does sound better. Okay. We're going to pause for a second. Let everybody catch up on the stream. Doesn't sound like you're talking through a fan anymore. Okay. What's up, Jones? Love this podcast. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, thank you guys. It, it, we are in the middle of nowhere, Illinois. So um, bear with us on we're trying to pull a bunch of different internet, cell, um, we'll see what happens. And we're live. <laughs> and we're back. Yay! <laughs> Our know, podcast, it, boys. You guys missed and it. Girls. About five minutes before we started here, I snapped the bass off of my. Uh, <laughs> Dude, Jared is just too strong. Is what it comes down to. Is literally, it, it. We had set this thing up midday, and it was perfectly fine. <laughs> and then all of a sudden. I just see him cranking down on it harder than it well, needed to happen. It wasn't perfectly fine. It was uh, it was slipping, and it was <laughs> it was coming. The mic was coming yeah. out, so I had to readjust it. So we we uh, we zip tied it to the table, and it seems to be holding pretty good. So hopefully, I don't break it before the end of this thing. Seem like it's still working. Yeah. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah, Lots brother. Jeremy, for wearing a badass do, do. sweatshirt, a little then. Penn State wrestling, the only wrestling that matters in college. Um, I think the one thing that first of all. 
we appreciate you guys actually jumping on Halloween uh, to hang out and to talk. Um, a couple ground rules, I guess, if we can even say them, is we want to have and uh, you know read the comments that are coming through. Uh, so bear with us because obviously, as you can see, our internet is probably not the best. But we want to be able to read your comments. We want to be able to interact with you guys. We want you guys to ask questions. Um, just understand that it, it's going to take a while. Maybe you may write a question and we may answer it, but there's, there's definitely a lag here. We were kind of playing with this stuff earlier today. So um, those comments are flying in, though. I mean, we, sh we should be able to keep up with that. I mean, if we get on a rant, which we never do that, though, <laughs> yeah. we, we can scroll back up and we'll, we'll try to address these. So, yeah. Cool. It seems like it's working at least. Yeah. So I apologize. I, I, I guess the feed's a little bit choppy. Um, but as long as you guys can hear us, uh, we're in a kitchen. That's the main so thing. I, <laughs> there's no deceiving here. We are in a kitchen in an Airbnb. Um, <laughs> image quality on par with spy point cell cams. <laughs> mm, <laughs> Very mm -hmm, nice. Mm -hmm. Audio is much better. Oh, at least the audio is good. That's cool. Yeah. Probably makes me look like a the audio, audio was a lot of work. We had to bring a whole extra tote here to camp. Mm -hmm. We've got mics and the soundboard and. Yeah. The essentials from the table. So. Yeah. Well, uh, it is Halloween night. Ooh. Yeah, spooky. Halloween night. Uh, and Jared and I are in Illinois, obviously. We uh, we got to the new farm yesterday afternoon, probably about 2.30 or so. Um, no, day before. <laughs> yeah, day before. No, it was yesterday. Because <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I hunted. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. We got here yesterday. Well, we left yesterday morning. <laughs> yeah, well, I left my house at like 4, 4 a.m. I was on time. I was awake. You were awake. You were yeah. in the driveway, Very even right. though it was raining. 5 o'clock was pretty easy. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. And so, yeah, it feels a lot longer. We've only been here 36 hours. Yeah. Well, maybe that's because you killed a buck right in a first set, and I've sat three times and not seen a deer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, a uh, couple, Conrad. Uh, so, uh, I shot my buck last night. Uh, we'll talk about it here in a little bit. Um, Jared's hunted, uh, hunted the same spot this morning as he hunted last night, and then went into a new spot we call Honey Hole uh, this afternoon. And uh, I, I got turned on to that DSD decoy by uh, Jay Gregory. Jay Gregory the other day. I was like, yep. oh, I was like, that would work perfect for that. The first two sets. And uh, much like the third set, I didn't, I didn't see a deer, but I don't know. We'll get into that too. I guess it's what we're seeing as far as like rutting activity out here and stuff. It's uh, they're, they're not, you know, necessarily taken off by any means. I mean, tonight was, yeah. I mean, granted you, you, you know, you rattled that sucker in the first night. Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting. Uh, first of all, cause it's important. I saw uh, big Rick's wrote uh, two hearted IPA. Uh, Jared was filling IPA when we were at Walmart, mm -hmm. and so that's that's what we picked up. I don't know if it'll be the uh, Illinois beer of choice, like much like we have our highlight for Coors Original yeah. in Kansas. I do like an IPA for Illinois. It's getting a start. The two hearted, I don't know. It's just lacking a little little haze or a little yeah. cit citrus or it's lacking a little something. I almost got um, the <clears throat> Line and Hugels. Uh, uh, what is it? The the summer ale? No, oh, it's the one I got the other day that was really good. I can't remember what it was called. Uh -huh. Citrus weed or something. It's really good. They had it there and I just I went with something else. That's right. You do you did the right thing. Yeah. Um, but so one of the things that we were talking about, guys, and it'd be interesting. I love that we can engage with this. Uh Rory already jumping into the crossbow compound discussion. Uh it, we'll try to we'll try to play fair tonight. Never heard of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that we have not seen <laughs> in Illinois right now is uh yeah, like any rotting activity. Um, not even cruising. <clears throat> so I thought uh, both of us had um uh, a lot of bucks. Mm, you know, I think we both had a four-year-old cruising in Ohio today, mm -hmm. um, some smaller bucks. But here in Illinois, we have not seen any cruising. We haven't seen any chasing. Um, and and last night when I shot this buck, basically it would be all pre-rut activity is what I would... Yeah. Um, well, dude, you you were in it. I mean, it sounds like every time you rattled, you had something coming. You want to dive right into it? Start well, off with that? Sure. I mean, which has been the contrast to what I've seen. So, I mean, granted, there are some differences. Like, you know, Jeremy and I, for those that don't know, we, we bought this 180, uh, sorry, 140 acre farm. And hold on a second. My dad is on YouTube 
This dude doesn't even have an email. Jerry. What? Jerry. What are you talking about? Another first set buck for Jeremy. I'm going to sit with him for a second. I assume my dad is telling my mom what to write at this point. Uh huh. That's impressive, though. I'll give him credit. Very uh, good. But yes, another first sit buck down type of thing. So let's, let's, we'll just roll into it. So we uh, we got here at like 2.30, I think, is what it was. Here's what we were actually going to do. We um, Our Airbnb is about 30 minutes away from the farm. We were going to come to the Airbnb and drop our stuff off and then beeline back to the farm and get in. And um, we had like bluebird skies. It was beautiful yesterday. And so at some point, we decided, hey, let's not rush it. Let's go and uh, let's just go straight to the farm. Uh, and we've had some... Uh, not issues, but things that we've wanted to handle here. Uh, so a couple things we've had dog issues in the past week, uh, come up. And, uh, so that was a, that was one thing that we wanted to deal with. We knew who the landowner was, uh, coincidentally we met, uh, our neighbor who had the dogs couldn't have went better, right? Yeah. Great discussion. <clears throat> um, and, uh, so that, that made it worth going straight to the farm out of the gate. We had a because well, we weren't sure, right? We're like, you know, yeah. based on time, we're like, do we do we go to the Airbnb, unload and run over, or do we just go straight to the farm and kind of make it work? And on the way, we we I mean, we had nine hours the game plan here. Um, we talked about uh, we had a west northwest wind primarily, mm-hmm. um, and so uh, we kind of had the spots uh, what we call the cove, which we have a ground blind at, uh, bigger area. And, and kind of preface that with, we didn't know what our plots turned into. Um, they surely don't look like food plots from cameras. So like, we didn't know if it was just grass. It's the first time we've been out here since we almost died in August when it was 115 <laughs> degrees. Yeah. So we ran around with a bag seeder and threw a bunch of seed down and, uh, you know, paid a local kid to come over and spray it. Mm-hmm. And so this was our first time seeing, we're like, Hey, what's, you know, <laughs> are there, yeah. are there food plots here? Yeah. yeah. And, and so there were Ple- pleasantly surprised. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it did pretty good. And, um, so we have this cove area, uh, of which you, you brought the DSD decoy. And mm-hmm. so you want to try that out. Yep. Um, it's perfect place for it's it. It's a beast. I mean, that thing's, it's, it's solid. Yeah. And I mean, really in that spot for right now, it's a, it literally is like a cove into the woods from a, a CRP field. Uh, you, you have to have something that's going to pull those deer in closer to, in this case, the ground blind, because there, there's no way you're going to get a shot. I mean, you could shoot a hundred yards across that field. Mm-hmm. Um, so you ultimately, <clears throat> yeah, we're not shooting Ravens. 60, 60 um, yards across. Yeah. So, you know, you need something to kind of pull that deer in closer. So you had the DSD decoy. I kind of decided to do, and it was funny. We, we, uh, talked to Cody DeQuisto on the way out. And so I kind of decided to do a hang and hunt. Um, not because of that conversation, no, but, no, no. but it was a cool, yeah, yeah it was a cool, cool coincidence. What we didn't know is, um, essentially, yeah, just, just move it. There you go. Okay. Uh, what we didn't know is how how deep was I going to go um, from the basically our far eastern side of the property? That's because I can tell you're distracted by the comments. G- tell your story. Let's do like five minutes, and then we're going to come. We'll come back and read through. Okay, we'll read through. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just trying to keep up with people. I know. <laughs> yeah, my brain can't handle that. Uh, so, anyways. Uh, Decided that I was just going to kind of work my way in and at the furthest get down towards the creek, which uh, would shoot what we call the pinch of pinches Mm -hmm. um, because it is the pinch of pinches. Yeah, it's the creek bottom that runs through the center of the property. And it's like the biggest question mark is how to how to access it. Yeah, because you can come, you know, most of our farm is accessed from the west, you know, which with prevailing west wind is is tough because, you know, you know, it, it's uh, any way you walk in, you know, it's kind of blowing into the farm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it has some cool opportunities because you can set it up where, you know, there are certain spots where the bucks feel like they have the wind in their favor. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what it is. But we also have a right of way on the back half of the farm yep. that allows us to kind of dump over a, a hill right down to this thing. And we've we just never been down there. Well, that's what I was going to say. Nev- we've, we've never walked never... the whole farm. We've been to bits and pieces of it. And we're like, it seems like we could get down there. Like you have to walk through a spot. And a tornado had gone through that hillside. So a we tornado. don't, we don't, yeah, we don't know how thick it is. Um, so I walked by, we had a camera set up. We had a muddy camera set up. Uh, that scrape has not been active. And frankly, we talked about it today. I don't think we've seen a shooter on that camera. Mm-mm. This is a youth hunter, some neighbors. 
Yeah, trespassers. <laughs> uh, so we we went down. I walked down that edge. Um, I found another scrape and some really good trails, kind of uh, basically at the knob, like the end of this knob, essentially. Um, but with the way that the wind was going and kind of where I just was like, well, I'm just going to keep pressing. It was like four o'clock, I guess. Um, and I wanted to see what the downside of that hill looked like. And so when we get to that downside, I, I get to that point, I can see it's pretty clear down to the Creek. And then I easily can see right where our, our camera is and the like kind of the junction of this pinch of pinches, mm -hmm. which we have gotten some daylight shooter activity yep. on. And so I think I ranged at the top to to the to get like any shot at the pinch of pinch. It was like 67 yards. I was like, I got to go down. And so I started working my way down. And I finally I saw two trees that were probably 10 yards from the creek. And I figured if I could get into them, I would be between 30 and 50 yards on my shots. Um, I just didn't know. Like, I didn't really have time to trim anything besides the tree I was in. So it's just like, get up in there. So I, I picked the smaller of the two trees. Just far for you, 30 to 50 yards. You ever yeah. shot a deer over 10 yards? <laughs> yes. I've never shot... Usually it's like this. <laughs> I've never shot a deer. I don't think I've ever shot a deer over 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm notorious for like on top of them yeah. shots. Um, so... I, I get, I've, we've got Lone Wolf Custom Gears, hang that stand, get up in, and I've got, it's not as good as I'd like from a like shot selection because of the way, essentially, I'm on the down part of the hill. It goes up a bank over to this pinch of pinches. So those deer, are, they're not eye level with me, but it's like, I'm like five feet above them. So, I mean, if they look across the creek, they can see me really easily. Um, but that's the only option. So, um, I range, I've got 28 yards to the closest point, 50 yards to the furthest point and kind of a, a pretty wide, uh, shooting lane. It's the bottom. I mean, if you guys can visualize this, it's, it's a, it's a major bottom. Like we own two sections. There's a timber on either side of it and there's a big CRP field that in the back of it pinches way down to like, it's, what is it? 20, 30 yards across all the way down oh, to yeah. like nothing to, to a, nothing to a, like a two track that yep. keeps going on. And it's just, that's why we call it the pinch of pinch. I mean, you're kind of playing the game of coming over, per, you know, perpendicular to this pinch, uh, trying not to disturb e either of these two woodlots mm -hmm. to like get with a northwest well, wind. To, and as I'm walking in, I'm throwing milkweed. I I've almost got more of a north northwest type of wind. Like it almost feels like it's hitting me straight in the face, which was perfect to get in there. And then as soon as you get down in that bottom, you've got topography and you've got creek. You felt that thing pull straight west to east. Mm -hmm. Um, which was, I was okay with once I got up and set that Creek bends back, uh, when it crosses our property line, it kind of bends back to the right and it gives the deer an ability to come out of what was one of our bigger bedding areas and get downwind of me on a West wind. Um, now soon, I should say, as soon as I got down that bottom, I bumped a buck, um, which he couldn't win me. Um, I don't think he saw me. I think he just heard something and just kind of boogered out of there. Um, and he didn't blow. He, he just went up in and I could hear him stop and then kind of trot off a little bit. Got, got the stand hung. Um, probably 15 minutes go by and I rattle and immediately call a three-year-old out of that block. And this is when I kind of learned about the, what the wind was doing is he cut down really close to the Creek at like our property boundary, almost probably a hundred yards from me. And uh, he immediately got my wind. And blue, mm -hmm. blue, like snorted straight up in the woods, snort, snort, run, run, snort, snort, run, run. And it's like, <laughs> it's like 430, 445. I'm like, what the hell? Like, it's just ridiculous. So let it calm down. 15 minutes later, a, a doe did come out in the field. We had put some rye in there, which kind of came up. And kinda alfalfa. Yeah, like two acres of it. We yeah. Were, yeah. And um, doe comes into the field and I, I end up rattling again call a four point and a two year old <clears throat> out of there four point comes and does exactly what I want. 28 yards, dead broadside, like smoke city. The two year old gets downwind to me again and, uh, doesn't blow, but just doesn't like it and kind of, you know, books, it takes out, takes off. So, now I kind of realized because the wind was kind of intermittent. It was weird. Like it would kind of come and go. And um, 
I basically said, I can't, I can't call these bucks. I can't rattle and keep getting them downwind to me. Like I'm, it's never going to work out. So I stopped rattling. I think you and I were texting. I stopped rattling till five fifteen. I think. Uh, and, just when I started rattling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the wind, the wind died like completely. Yeah, it did. And so I, I threw milkweed, and I remember my thermals like just suck, almost going back to the west, like coming with the creek. So the creek flows east to west. Yeah, yeah, back the way. Pulled you're straight down underneath me. So get the antlers out, and we've talked about it before. I, I, I use Primo's buck roar, and uh, uh, I'm a blind caller as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, shirk off. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just got to shirk off every yeah, once yeah. in a while. So. I mean, I, I let it, I hammered this time, but we talked about the, the brown tines on the route. Yeah. On the rat, like I was busting. Do, do you knuckles. always grunt before you rattle? No, I grunt after I rattle. Really? Mm-hmm. What if something's close and you scare, scare it off by rattling too loud? I don't worry about it. You don't worry about it? <laughs> <laughs> if it's, if it, See, I like to, I, I like a little foreplay. Like I, I get yeah. to grunting. I grunt for you know, yeah. a little while. Uh-huh. I'll get a, like a roar. Oh, I'll get yeah. a roar going and then oh, I'll deep. Then I, uh, 20, 30 seconds. Then I, I always get two snort wheezes. <laughs> really? Oh, That's yeah. bold. I see. I I normally won't snort. I, I'm more of a tendon grunt, and then maybe a roar. Like I'm I'm kind of getting, but I won't snort wheeze unless I see them. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Mm. See, I don't rattle unless I snort wheeze first. <laughs> <laughs> one foot in front of the other. Uh, yeah, one foot in front of the other, brother. I'm not sure if there's a pattern there. All I know is that Primo's buck roar. I I have mm. it somewhere. I literally have cross marks of all the bucks I've killed with that. It's mm. eleven or twelve at this point. Wow. Um, and, uh, so I rattle and then I, you know, a couple tending grunts and just like, you know, a heavy roar on the backside, hang it up. It's 60 seconds and I can hear and it's coming straight down the hill in front, which of we know is kind of like the sanctuary of the farm. We're like, yeah. that's, that's the bedding area. Yep. And, um, so get the, get the bow. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. He pops out and he actually was further to the West than I thought. And I didn't know what deer it was. So we we kind of had um, we kind of discussed that, you know, we essentially we had certain deer we were going to shoot, and a lot of four year olds. Were- yeah, with a hit list, basically. Yeah, there's like three, three which, mid- which we loosely threw together on the way here. We're like, okay, so we've all been seeing the pictures here. Yeah. What do you want to shoot? There's like three big mature eight points we were going to kill. Yeah, and um, no bo- no booners or anything like this on this farm. No. <laughs> However, the last like. The last week, we've had new bucks showing up every day, which has been really cool. And kind of, honestly, for you and I, like, we're not used to that. No. You know, usually you get a pretty good inventory of, of our home farms and stuff. And it's like, you got what you got. We've literally had, like, I think, uh, you every know, day. like almost three, four days in a row, we had like a new four-year-old show up. And we've had some new shooters show up and stuff. And Yeah. No, last night after, if I, after I shot this buck, a new shooter showed up. Yeah. Yeah. No, no megas in terms of like giant scoring deer. I mean... Yeah, don't get me wrong. I think we've got some really nice up and coming three and we've four year olds. We've got a lot of really good, like 150 to 160 type three and four year olds. And, um, and we've got a, you know, like a, whatever, whatever you call it, like a group of bully bucks, you know, one in particular that I'm still after. Oh, floppy. Old the flop. Yeah. Yeah. Old flop. Yeah. Um, so, and in, in obviously recognizable, busted ear, like we know floppy. There's he's got, he's um, gotta be at least 37 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Two years <laughs> younger than me. Uh, there was a, a really good four year old that we said we weren't going to kill that a tall, uh, mainframe 10 split G2, which he just busted off, but had really tall brows and he wasn't real wide. And so when this deer came out, he turned his head and I could see like visibly without binos, like tall brows. And I'm like, shit, like that's that four year old, mm-hmm. you know? And I was like, told Jared, I wasn't going to shoot that deer. <laughs> You didn't shoot him because of me. Huh? Well, I guess you didn't have the option. But no, I wasn't going to shoot him. But I thought that's what that deer was. So I didn't even, I had my bow in my hand, but I wasn't, I wasn't even worked up. I, I didn't, I thought it was a four year old. This first set. You're like, I just got yeah, here. I was in the stand for two hours. I just got here. Um, which is my style. <laughs> and so he starts coming up this trail and it kind of dips down before it comes up to the field. And I, I got my binos out and put them on him. And when he lifts his head, I'm like, uh, I don't see G4s like at all. And there's another buck that we're trying to kill. That is a mainframe mate with really tiny G fours. Yep. This guy's clean, but it's, you know, classic dude. As soon as he looks up, just, just no, no neck, just shoulders the head. And I'm like, that's a, that's a mature. I've, honestly, I thought it was a different, I thought it was a new buck. Really? When I first saw him, I was you like, never, before you shot him, you never did figure it out. Who never was. did. Mm. No, I, I thought it was a mature buck. 
I knew it was a mature buck. I thought it was you did a after. buck. So would you, you, would you jump in and start yeah. rifling through pictures? Absolutely You're like, did. I, think, I think it's this one. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> but here's the, here's the craziest part about this because the, these, these mature bucks are so damn smart. Like they've gone through so much shit. He came out, as soon as he came out, he starts pawing at the ground. He's pissed. He immediately locks in on me. I don't know if I moved. I don't know if it's just because I had no silhouette or uh, no um, structure back, back behind me and he could see my silhouette. I mean, <laughs> immediately locks on me to the point where he stomps and blows three times. Like hard, like blow. you're busted, like echoed through the valley, busted, <laughs> like <laughs> son of a bitch, busted. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm just like, I don't even think I, I took my uh my release off because I'm just like eh, I'm screwed. Took your release off, yeah, not off my hand, but off the D loop. Yeah, I'm like I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, my hand yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he he angles to the to the right where I have no shots and stops and locks on me again. And this is the one where I've, you know, I don't stare. I'll look at them, but I don't stare down. I'm never in buck. the eye though. Yeah. You don't no, like them. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. And I remember looking at him and he's staring at me and I just tuck myself like in, I was like a roosted Turkey yeah. and just kind of like stare down at the ground. Eventually I close my eyes for probably four minutes and I'm just listening. Is it really that long? Yeah. I'm just listening for him to four move. Four minutes. Four minutes. He's dead staring at me. And I'm just listening for him to move. And I finally hear him move. And when I do, he's ass facing me, heading back towards the trail he came down. I had already previously ranged it and had my dial up. It was 40 yards. And as we just discussed, like I, I've never shot a deer past 30. Mm -hmm. I practiced a 60 all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but I've never killed a deer past 30. And as um, soon as he turns around, I go into full draw. <clears throat> I feel solid. But like... It's almost, I, I think it was probably the best part was that my nerves weren't there um, because like it was, I didn't think I was going to get the shot. Like yeah. I went into full draw because I had to. That was my only chance. And then you were like, I'm at full draw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's happening? And I mean, I'm solid on them. And <laughs> we've talked about this before and it was so like, it just, it, it kind of all came back together at the end. But he... Right before he came into the trail, he did one of these. Mm -hmm. And just to see, like, is he still in the tree? And dude, as soon as he did, he gave me just a quarter away that I, I put it. If you, if you guys have seen the picture on, um, on Instagram, I put it on his, his last rib, basically. Um, it was that hard of a quarter away. Put it on his last rib and let it eat. And um, I saw that knock hit. And my first reaction, I think I told you, was, oh, shit. <laughs> it wasn't good. Well, you didn't think you got penetration. That's was, why. Yeah. I, I didn't. I wasn't concerned with being back because the, the angle. So hard, yeah. yeah, the angle was perfect. I was concerned that in order for that to work, I got to get like significant penetration. When he took off, I saw what I thought was a large amount of arrow hanging out. And I think it was, um, I, I think what happened was it hit so hard. It hit his opposite shoulder. We saw this when we, when we skinned him, mm -hmm. I think it hit his opposite shoulder and bounced back. Mm -hmm. And so like it went straight up through basically guts, liver, lungs, just straight through. You think it bounced back? I don't think it works that way. Or it worked its way back. Is when it, he was is on it the possible ground? you just didn't know what you, is it possible you saw it wrong? No, no, no. I mean, I saw plenty of arrow, too much arrow out, in my opinion. I mean, I'm shooting 30 inch arrows, basically. Um, well, well, but how do you explain? Because I mean, when we got up to it, there was only that much arrow hanging, I know. hanging out of them. It, it was way more than that. Huh. Like it had, or when he took off, it like started to work its way back out. I don't know. Because the deer ends up laying down. For, first of all, as crazy as it seems, is like I was kind of cussing myself out for not the best shot. He goes 25 yards and stops. And I'm like, all right, what are you going to do? And he stumbles and it goes down. And I'm like, what the hell? It, because I, it wasn't because of the angles, because of the penetration. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think I called, I texted you, you texted called me. me. I called you, yeah. And I was like, hey, you know, he just put his head down. And you're like, well, that's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Yeah. And you're like, well, I don't know. He's laying there with his head down. I'm like, that's good. That's you want that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think it's because I was kind of in a, a bit of a, you know, worked up disbelief in that this deer at 25 yards, he went down. Yes. It was a sever, Jeremy. I did see that comment. Yep. Two inch titanium sever. Tore him up. Um, 
And uh, of which, uh, you know, again, this first year I've killed with or shot with a sever. So I was just like, man, I didn't get penetration. Like I was kind of, I was just, you know, I know. I, I, know. I don't know. How are you when you kill, like when you shoot a big buck, yeah. I, like if it's like a no brainer, then I'm fine. But if it's marginal, like in my head, I immediately, I'm like this, this went wrong. I did this. This oh, shouldn't yeah. have done this. Like, it's not I'm good. Just, so like, even though he was down, like I said, we were talking, I, I was still, uh, I even told Emily, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to, like this deer's dead. You know, she's like, well, you didn't cross the creek and go get him. I was like, no, I don't know. He's dead. Well, that's where I was like, I had written and, and deleted the text message like three or four different times trying to like give, tell you, help you figure out what to do. Yep. And fortunately you had like 20 or 30 minutes, I think to like, to oh, watch him and make sure he didn't. Yeah. Cause he, cause of the, you have he three, laid down, you have three options. You basically, you get down and put another arrow on him, which is super risky. It would have been tough getting over there. You, you get down and you leave. Mm-hmm. And then, which the, I don't have eyes on him anymore. And I don't like that either. Or the third is, you know, you just yeah. do your best to like make, and make, hate, make a, an and assessment. And you don't want the animal to suffer, right? I mean, yeah, of course. Um, so I watched him after I hung up with you, put his head down. I, I texted you and said, You're like, I have to be real quiet. <laughs> yeah. He's like 150 <laughs> yards. He does, he does the death spin. Yeah. Like just straight circles. Oh, spin. I know. There was a freaking like dirt ring when we found yeah, him. Yeah, it looked like he was caught in a foothold. Yeah. Um, and then um then I could he he went behind the tree, so I couldn't see him, but I could see the lighted knock still. Yeah. And I, I watched it for 30 minutes probably, and I was like, it hasn't moved. Mm-hmm. Like either he kicked it out and somehow got away, which I don't think was the case, or he's dead. Mm-hmm. But even when I well, picked you that, up, that, I still that, was like Yeah, well, that was the we're like, well, we know where the knock's at. Like, is the de- is there a deer on the other end of it? What's the question? Yeah. Yeah. We, and I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know the answer to that question. Well, I so, assumed he was dead there. Yeah. That it did not move. There was there, the knock. I questioned moved. you pretty hard on it, too, because I was like, I, yeah. I did not want to go in there if, there, if it was questionable. Yeah. And, and you were you were confident. You're, well, like, I'm a, you're like, I watched. I He laid down. Yeah. He was there. That knock did not move. And I was like, cool. Let's, yeah. let's go get him. I mean, it made sense. He was dead. Just. Because it wasn't a no-brainer shot, yeah, that's what was my question. Yeah, um, so we drive down, uh, down into the field, probably stop a hundred yards from where he's at. We walk what twenty yards, and you're like, "There's a light knock." Yeah, which made me a little bit nervous because of it. Was, oh, we didn't think we were that far in yet. No, no, no. I, I, you're like, I want to park back here a little ways. That was the we, we got out and walked being, twenty yards, and I was like, "Yeah, knock right there." That was the deception of being across the creek. Is he yeah. was deeper into those woods than I thought? Yeah. So we kind of snuck down in, saw a giant, giant set of rubs when we were getting down in there. I know I freaked you out a little bit. I said, shh, shh. I know. I was like, I said, what are you doing? Giant, I, I said, giant I'm, rubs. I'm literally knocked in, like sneaking up. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? You're like, giant rubs. I'm like, oh, good fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, giant rubs, dude. It's cool. <laughs> um, so we get up on the hill and we see the knock, kind of make the approach and then snuck right up on him. Dead. Yeah. And I've, I guess first was like, holy shit. Yeah. This deer is a mega... It would look like a cow dead. Yeah. Giant body. You actually picked the antlers up. You're like, dude, what the hell? I know. Because I, I didn't... Like, it, again, it's You're a mature... You're still fumbling with your arrow and I jumped behind your deer and I was like, look at this thing. <laughs> it's a mature buck. But like, I didn't... I didn't even think of him being like a big... Like, big buck. Or like... Yeah. Um, well, we're not used to these, you know, these Midwestern bucks are just built different, man. I mean, yeah. that's... Like you said, you pulled the teeth. I mean, I, I don't know. He's four probably, or five or six. I don't know. Yeah, probably five or we six. We don't know. We don't have any history with these deer. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he was big, man. And we, we don't have a scale out here yet. But I mean, I'd guess that thing was all of, you know, 225, 230 on the hook. Or uh, sorry, field, field dress. dress. Yeah, he's probably like 270s to 280s. Like and on he the was hook. stout. Yeah, it was yeah. a, you know, the base measurement was what, five and a half? Yeah. You guys want to see him? Yeah. <laughs> see him? <laughs> Oh, there he is. There he is. I don't know how good that video quality is, but maybe it'll make him look bigger. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, again, the body size on this deer is, is substantial. Um, and then I, we've talked about it before. Like I haven't killed a deer with like ever in my life. Um, we scored them today, one twenty-eight and three quarters, mm-hmm. which we are both actually over on. I know, Quincy. Well, I said one thirty-seven, one thirty-seven, one thirty-eight is what I was thinking, but yeah, it's just—I mean, dude, he's got 
mass for days, but he just lacks, you know, what you need to score, which is be- beams and width, you know, and number of points. Yeah, obviously he's, a, he's an eight point with some joke. With he's, some- he's just under 16 inches inside. He's got a really strong 22 inch beam on his left. Uh, broke off a little bit on the right, but that was 20. Good brows, which again, if you guys can see the brows, like this is what I saw coming in. I So that's why I kind of confuse him with this other deer. Decent twos, fighter. He, he broke off his threes. Um, He's all snapped up. He snapped yeah. that, snapped that, snapped his But I mean, main the, the weight of this skull cap is pretty insane. Yeah, he's stout. So, uh, that's what I told you. I was like, dude, that's, that's the perfect buck to take off this farm. Yeah. Mich- mission accomplished on this, man. Cause this, this was one of the three bucks that we said we would kill. So to, to your point, after I kind of calmed down, I was shaking like a leaf, man. I love that. I There's nothing better. That's why I called you. I was also cold, but it was just like, right. Uncontrollable. <laughs> uh-huh. I was like, <laughs> um, I went back through and I, I recognize we had some pictures. I think it was like October 17th or 18th. We had like several pictures of this guy daylighting Mm -hmm. um, at multiple spots and hadn't really seen him much since then. But like, we we just don't know what these deer are doing yet, Mm -hmm. Um, where they're going, how they're moving. We just knew he was kind of in that area. So um, yeah, pretty cool. I mean, super excited about this. Trav's going to mount it. Um, So yeah. Yeah. You were like, what do you think? I'm, I'm like, Yes, you should mount that deer. I'm like, well, it's a, dude, it your first freaking giant buck off the Illinois farm. Of course, you it should was mount such it. a. It was kind of an emotional roller coaster because it's funny. It, you even said it when I was getting in. You're like, dude, you're gonna kill a buck tonight because it's just that's kind of how I operate um, with these travel hunts, and I don't know why. I, you know, I'd like to think it's because I'm actually aggressive. Uh, I don't necessarily know if that's the case. I mean, this was an aggressive move to go and hunt where I killed this guy. Um, but I just, I have a tendency of killing bucks on first, first sits or, or first mornings when we get into a, a new place, Kansas being the other place that we, I do it often, did it last year, did it the year before. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, what a brute <laughs> mature buck, dude. Um, super happy with, um, uh, huge, huge buck to, to get off this farm. And the, the reason we obviously like no brainer, like if I see this buck anywhere, I'm killing them. Like not even thinking twice. Um, but you know, one of the things that we're at least looking at is, and we don't know if it'll make a big difference, but if we can take out a few of these bigger bully bucks, do these three and four year olds that are really, really super quality, don't you know, don't they do they not get pushed out and get killed by somebody else or mm-hmm. you know, leave or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Well, it certainly can't hurt, you yeah, know, from from a from, this a, guy's from kicking, a management perspective, and we're happy to shoot them in the meantime. This I mean, dude is beating their asses for sure. Yeah, I mean, it just outweighs these the other deer by a ton, you know, and just heavy and and push them around. So, pretty cool. First buck, first sit. It's good stuff, man. Illinois farm. So, anyways, long story. No, good story, man. Fun. What's uh? You want to you want to jump in and read some of these comments? We'll catch up yep. on these. Yep, yep, yep. I do. Uh, so I don't break it. <laughs> Uh, okay. You know, scroll up and. Yeah, I've got it on this side. Too. Whoa. Whoa. My mic's kind of. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, just because I'm lazy, uh, Jeffrey W says, How long are you staying on this trip? And when are you planning to head to Illinois next? So we are here till Thursday morning. Um, so Jer- uh, one thing I guess to clarify, if you guys don't know about Illinois, is we actually have two buck tags here in Illinois. Um, however, my other buck tag is for gun season. I can still shoot a bow, shoot it with a bow, but it has to be during a gun season. Um, there is uh, what they call landowner tags. So Jared and I each can get a non-resident landowner archery tag as well. We just closed on the property too late to get that this year. So effectively this year, we both have our non-resident archery either sex tag, and then we can get a gun uh, either sex tag. So we could shoot two bucks, but uh, next year we'll be planning on doing um, the non-resident landowner tag so that we'll actually have two archery buck tags basically to use throughout the year. Yeah. So, okay, your turn. Oh, just pick one? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, here, I'll try to cover a, a bunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, how far from the auction farm you guys were looking at and did not end up finding? Uh, so that's Carson Weiser. Uh, that was McCoopin County. 
Yeah, it was a ways away. So we found that. I mean, I don't know. We found this farm on a on the way back from our first trip. Literally two, three hours, probably. Yeah. So it's nine or ten hours out here from our houses. Um, we came out. First of all, we we were interested in uh, the Macoupin County one. There was mm-hmm. like a there was an auction. It was like an eighty acre timber track that butted up to the Boy Scouts, a uh, Boy Scout it. camp. Mm-hmm. And we're like, ooh, dude, that could be good. Like, uh, depending on what hunting on that Boy Scout camp looks like, let's you know. And so it's a ten hour drive, like I said. So we tried to do some research beforehand, and like the day before we were going to leave, I, I found out that. Uh, in fact, I called the director of the Boy Scout camp there and he's like, oh yeah, it, no, it gets hunted by an outfitter. And I looked at the outfitter and like, you know, pages full of three-year-olds and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I was like, that's not going to work. You know, so we, but we were already like committed to, I think just like mentally, we both needed the trip. And I was like, we were, yeah. we were committed. So like, I was like, dude, let's, let's pick two others. We like, didn't even, Bobby we Kendall's. didn't look at that um, property. No, like, we, we, we didn't even the go whole to point it. of it initially and then we didn't go to it in in retrospect from an investment side bobby kendall was trying to buy that place too because he said there was a hundred thousand or eighty thousand dollars in black walnut on it yeah um which we didn't know yeah we kind of looked at pictures we were like is that a walnut we're like that's a walnut walnut. that's an oak (laughs) yeah so um investors and bobby didn't buy it somebody else did and i'm I'm sure it's a great property but what did it go for uh 6200 an acre okay yeah uh which you know, not to deviate too much, it, it's uh, for real, guys. Like, this is a great example of um, kind of stopping the increase in land prices. Is when Jaron and I were looking, and then we we made an offer that was accepted on this farm. You know, most things in the area were fifty seven hundred to sixty four hundred, probably an acre. Uh, there are properties around us now selling between seventy five hundred and eighty two hundred an acre for rec ground. Yeah, uh, crazy. Like, and I'm not saying that there's, I mean, people are going to buy them, but it's just, it, it's a weird thing of, of how these prices are getting jumped up. And if you guys haven't listened to it, you might want to go back at some point, listen to Higgins podcast that we just dropped. We had a long talk about what we believe is driving those increasing prices um, in recreational land and essentially making it a rich man sport. Yeah. Um, you know, Don was a guy who was probably buying ground up at, you know, 2,500 to 4,500 an acre, like crazy. And, you know, he's like, damn, the average guy can't even afford a 40 anymore in Illinois. Yeah. It's just not possible. (laughs) Well, and there's obviously nothing wrong with loaning or uh, with owning land. I mean, that's, I think a lot of people dream about that. But when it gets to a point where it's like, you may not have an option to Mm -hmm. hunt, it's like, man, it's, I don't think anybody is, is looking for that scenario. So, uh, Nolan, yes, the sever was fully intact. Um, when we recovered it. In fact, Jared and I looked at it. We took a, pic- a picture of it. Yep. It's actually in pretty good shape. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, you know, and I didn't go through shoulder blade or anything. I mean, I may have bounced off of that one or however that worked, but no, I mean, it, it ate up through there. I was pretty impressed. At the, I felt a lot better when I got to the buck and saw six inches of 30 inches of arrow hanging out. Yeah. Um, I mean, that thing drilled it, He was there. torched. I mean, he didn't run, but 35 mm-hmm. yards. Yep. And that was uh, that's 125 grain that we we're using as yeah. well, which I like. So here, let's see if we can knock some of these out. Super thankful for the work you can do to take off. Any okay, uh, out of the 140, how many acres are timber versus CRP? What's the topography ditches, etc.? Uh, Lance, it's it's primarily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's, I would say it's uh, I don't know, almost two thirds CRP, almost maybe um, half. I mean, half. Yeah, it's probably half. It's about... Well, it's, there's 50, 50, 50 acres in the CRP contract. 56. Yeah. And, and there's... The balance, eight acres of tillable. And there's 30 or 40 timber. Yeah, and then the balance is like brush and drainages. And there's a house and a yard on and it. And there's, there's also some in hay production, alfalfa hay, hay production. Old alfalfa field. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's mainly it's like... It's open. Yeah, there's not a lot of timber, and the timber that is there, look, we got to be pretty, yep, you know, pretty tender with. Uh, Jared and I actually talked it, about it today in that um, it, it, there's a lot of wasted space on the property right now. We just haven't had time to do anything, well, and they also so, mowed our CRP. Yeah, so we were getting all fired of, oh, it's all CRP. Like we're just imagining like a Mark Drury type hunt with this like 180 coming <laughs> out of this giant CRP field, and we get out there in the summer for. Uh, wasn't the first no 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 so we'd already got it under contract yeah. we were coming out to put some like you know do cameras our, and food plots cameras food plots tree stands and the guy had just mowed all of it and it was like august yeah and i was like 
dude. When we came, it, when we were watching, <laughs> like just these, straight out mowing it. When we were watching these CRP fields today, you could have saw like a mouse walking through them. Yeah. Like that's how low they are. It was, and that's why like there's just gaping holes in this thing. And it, there's still good bucks on it. It's just, it can be so much better. Yeah. Um, in fact, we talked about like nailing like no mowing sites. Cause people, people mow, they're like, oh, I'm doing them a favor. Like I'm going to mow these down and stuff. And it's like, no, dude, don't touch it. Yeah. Don't cut it yeah that's that's been the theme i mean did you're super fortunate to have killed a buck off this thing like first year let alone first sip but there's been a there's been a whole lot of since we closed on this thing up until now and i'm sure it's not over is just you know becoming a part of the neighborhood basically and meeting all the neighbors like we, we've encountered trespassers we've encountered you know neighbors are reaching out to us you know for better or worse like you know through different means and stuff where there's dogs running on the farm there's yep. horses running across there and it's like you know boy we think we thought we did everything do our research and we do have a great farm. I mean, I, after these couple of days here, I, we're both feeling affirmed with that. Yes. But there's no shortage of stress. It's anywhere. It, so. I mean, every one of my property had dogs on it in the last 10 days. Like it's just, it doesn't matter. It's just, there's, there's human populations everywhere and thus influence on your farm anywhere. Just how it is. Yeah. Um, I saw it just quickly. Dylan wrote, yeah, Dylan, this is, I think this just goes on as a podcast for YouTube later. So Chris says uh, never come back to Illinois. <laughs> he sell, he's to sell your farm and move on. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, too many out of staters. I don't, there you know, are a lot of out of staters. I mean, well, you know, what was funny is um, everybody we've talked to. So two points here. Number one is, uh, Jared and I consider ourselves pretty likable guys. You know, as long as you're not a crossbow hunter, you probably like us. Um, maybe most cross, some crossbow people like us too. <laughs> Just some kids mainly. Yeah. <laughs> um, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, ultimately, we've tried to make sure that our name is well spoken about through the local community. Um, and and we've had a couple instances here where we've had some issues with things. And people have reaffirmed that the name has gone around and they're like, oh, no, we know you guys are good guys. Um, At least twice now we've said, dude, small world. Remember when, and it's not like we're being nice to people just to, you know, gain favor or anything. We're just being, we're just being nice. And I think on two different occasions now it's come around and we're like, oh, they're like, hey, I heard from so-and-so. You guys are great guys. I actually met, I met you down at the, you know, the, the local bar there or whatever. And it's like, man, that's. It, goes, it a, go, uh, goes a long way. I talked to a hundred year old guy the other day because we had an issue with a, a property and, and, and stuff, but um, he was, he was great. He was sharp as hell, you know? And he was like, yeah, he's like, my son met you down at Spoonies and you know, da, 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 da. And it was like, Oh, cool, man. Like, that's awesome. You know? And it's just, those are the kind of things that we really try to, try to take pride in. Um, I, I saw a thing on here about, do we talk to our neighbors before a season? It, honestly, it's opportunistic. Even tonight, um, I dropped Jared off and I went to the other side. I was going to do a, a trail map for him to get back to the stand I hung for tomorrow morning. And while I was sitting there, this truck comes flying up. In fact, I was talking to my wife on the phone. And I was like, oh, I'm about to have an encounter here. So <laughs> let me let me call you back. And uh, just kind of buzzes by me and goes into the neighbor's field. And uh, a kid gets out. First, first person out of the truck is a kid. And so I basically got out. And at that point I kind of realized, okay, these are the youth hunters that are over here, you know? And then he was a really nice guy. In fact, the first thing he said to me was like, Hey, uh, during new season, you got me on that camera down there. First thing he said, didn't try to cover it up. Didn't try to lie or bullshit me. And I was like, Oh yeah, I got it. He's like, I didn't know this property sold. He's like, he shot a doe. We were down there looking for it. I was like, man, no problem. Here's my card. You got my number. Like just, I'm never going to stop you for that. Like, just let me know. And uh, was great. But so it's opportunistic. And, and I think uh, yesterday we got here early. We talked to the, the neighbor that we had dog issues with. Done deal. In fact, we she probably have a, a better relationship for it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's that opportunistic. Way on you too. Just the, the longer, you know, you have to wait to have those conversations. Like I was a little nervous about the, the dog one. I was like, man, I, yeah. I don't want our first interaction with this neighbor to be like, hey, get your dogs off our property, you know? And it, so we had to like, we just kind of bit the bullet and jumped in there. Unfortunately, she, she was super nice. And you know, we, I think we, we have a good relationship there now because of that. Yeah. I think the, and I'm guilty of it too. Like I, I probably don't talk to a lot of my neighbors as much as I should. I, I don't really know. I know a couple of my neighbors at the Kentucky new farm. I need, need to do a better job there, but my relationships in Ohio have led me to acquire new properties um, adjacent to mine to yeah. build onto that farm. So I think it's just, it's important. Um, Jared will tell you that we've had some incidences on this farm, even that I've been, 
I was pissed. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I was, I was <laughs> livid. And it's just like, it, I don't know. I've done stupid stuff when I was a kid, right? It, I'll, I'll tell like when you're my age. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I trespass. Like I did, you know, I just hunted wherever I could hunt when I was a teenager. But it, it you know, obviously thing, a lot of things have changed there. It wasn't that long ago, but right. it was pretty long ago. Um, it, it just, uh, when you have a conversation with someone and you ask them not to do something, hey, I know you're doing this. Please don't do this. And then they do it again. I have issues with that. And so um, we decided to take some high roads on some of these things, which, you know, I think is just hopefully a kind of reiteration of who we are to the local community um, versus calling the first, you know, first time calling the sheriff and having them out there and that kind of stuff. So it is funny where your mind goes. You're like, what can I do to win this? You're like, how do do I destroy this person? (laughs) I was also having a bad week. I I was in a a pit for a while there. So, um, I'm better now because I cut a buck. I know. Uh, but yeah, so it just, it, you know, it just depends. So anyways, pray, step on that. Let's keep going. Uh, we're, we're going bottom up here, guys. I'm sorry. I know we missed a ton of comments and they're ripping in. I saw Rendell whining about public. Bro, you live in Iowa. Where's he at, Rendell? He's up there whining about killing 150 well, all, to 180 all his, inch deer in all his, Iowa. All his, deer, all his deer died. That's why. He's not even hunting worries because he got the... Oh, he got the EHD. He got the EHD. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. You need to get that checked out. That's not good. We love you, Rendell. <laughs> <laughs> Grind it out in public. Here, we're going we're gonna to keep going bottom top. What you guys sipping on tonight? It's the Two Hearted Ale. We're moving on from it, though. Yeah, let's see a celebrity chuck. We actually have three beers. We realized like... <laughs> We realized 30 minutes before this podcast that we're like, uh, hey, dude, we have three beers in the fridge. That's, that's, we, that's we, a problem. I was I was like urgently Googling all the local. They're all closed and stuff. So we got to uh, we got to the property at like two o'clock and we we're like, we don't have any water. So like, oh, we got beer. Can you believe we got here yesterday? That's, that doesn't <laughs> Seems make sense. Like a long time ago. <laughs> um, we're, yeah, we are mounting that buck, Chris. Uh, daily YouTuber, try the public. PA is loaded. And I kill a nice one every year. Awesome. Yeah. Let, okay. Okay. I'm rereading some. How of many acres do I own now, and how many states lands? Here's, this is a good one, dude. Do you encourage any of the neighbors to work with you to manage great past, question, past, past young deer, and how Stoma. do you go about bringing that up? Oh, that is Nick. Hey, you Nick. son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> so Nick, yeah, he probably texted us this earlier. Uh, so I actually had a really cool encounter with those those guys tonight. Um, I I was trying. I really was trying to encourage Kit. First off, and not to make this about you know, the expos, uh, both of those guys, including the 10 year old was shooting a compound, uh, that I ran into. Tonight. Oh, crossbow. So yes, yeah, I, I yeah. didn't want to say that. <laughs> uh, so it was really cool when I saw the kid bring out a compound bow and he was 10 years old. I'm like, my bro, my man, <laughs> my <Yeah>. man, <laughs> I went over fist bumped him. <laughs> and, uh, I said, uh, he, said said, he was wearing origin camo too. No, no, no. Oh, origin camo. The dad was, yeah, yeah. The dad was, and uh, you'll so see I, a lot of that. No, so I talked to him, and I was like, uh, I could tell the kid was really excited. If snow was fine, it was Halloween. I was I like, see hey, you EP, uh, EP fish and work, and I'm coming back to you. He, so, uh, I, I said, hey man, I said, just let so you know, I killed a really big eight point down on this bottom. I said, but man, we've been seeing a ton of new bucks every day. I was showing him some pictures, just getting him excited. He's like, man, I hope one of these come out tonight. And I was like, yeah, that's great. So. I, I told him, Nick, that we were trying to manage for four and five year old bucks. Um, that was our goal, you know, and and that we have a lot of four year old bucks even this year that we're going to pass. I didn't ask him to join in or do anything. I just made it known that we were doing that and that I was planting food plots and anything else. So that's a hard thing to do, man. Yeah, I mean, dude, we're just uh, you know we're still adapting to like the age structure and the quality that's here, you know, to make an assessment for ourselves, like what even on the way out here, we're like, Hey, what do you, what's a shooter? What's not, you know, it, the line for us is between, you know, probably four, four and five. We're like, Hey, are we, sh- yeah. are we shooting four year olds? Well, we've had this p- discussion even today and that in Ohio and Kentucky, although we want to shoot five year olds, there's a good chance we'll shoot four year olds. Cause that's just the more realistic expectation. Say that again. In Ohio and Kentucky, our oh, yeah. goal is to shoot five year olds, yeah. but it just, ever more realizing that that's a very, very difficult thing. <laughs> and so, you know, we probably are not going to pass like really good four-year-olds. Yeah. Well, I did. It varies from farm to farm for me. I mean, or year to year and you, eh, not so try to hold, you know, if I've got a goal of something, I really try to, well, I if just, it's possible, if it's possible, that's yeah. If you have a shooter that year, like if you have five-year-olds that year, then it, it's possible. But if you don't like, 
What are you going to do? Just not hunt? <laughs> well, that's why we have irons in the fire. I'll go to Illinois. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's literally what oh, you've done. I mean, that's been the whole evolution of like. I mean, we 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 don't have to go down that tonight. But I mean, I I I've struggled. I guess you probably have to. I mean, that's just the. Uh, people have to figure out like wh- what kind of what kind of deer am I going to shoot like and it's mm-hmm. it's your it's your decision right yeah. unless you you know like we own this property together like I don't want to disrespect you by shooting deer that you don't want shot yeah. same you know and same goes for like my family properties like there's sure. other guys that hunt that and like I'm trying to maintain a, a, a standard of quality or of you know an age structure that we're shooting for and it's it's hard because I don't want to be the bad guy either that's telling people not to shoot deer every year mm-hmm. yeah so it it changes from not so much year to year, but property to property and state to state circumstance to circumstance. I mean, dude, at the end of the day, like if, you know, if, if you've got the go ahead from the landowner or whatever, the authority to shoot a deer and you want to shoot them, like you should shoot them. Yeah. I agree. All right. You read the next one. I got to pee. Normally we would pause the podcast or edit this, but we can't. Go so for it. I gotta I'll, pee. I'll rip through some of these. Okay. You just got outside. Yeah. I'm just going to be outside. <laughs> uh, let's see. Pick them deep. Dude, Iowa will always be better than most places. Justin Olkin can't. Shoot mooners if you kill them at 150. Better pass this four year olds. Yep, that's the plan right now, Justin. Um, and honestly, they're like not in a braggadocious way. Like there's 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 plenty of mature bucks out here. Like I said, like uh, within the past week and a half, we've had like I'm going to say three or four, you know, four or five year olds show up. And with no history, Jeremy and I have had to kind of you know try to figure out what's what. And you know, those old bully A points are easy and like. I've got my sights set on, uh, there's two left. There's two big, old, nasty, you know, 280 plus looking A points, basically. And so that's what we're looking for. Let's see. I said EP fishing and working. I said I would come back to you. I saw some of your stuff earlier. Um, dude, let's let's connect. You can write us on um, Instagram. Just DS, DM us. It's the at we are hunter. And I'm back. How do I scroll up on this? These guys want to see what's in the cabinet and fridge. There's nothing in there. I, I, they, you guys realize this isn't like our real deer camp. Like this is an Airbnb. <laughs> this, this is an Airbnb. It's an Airbnb. <laughs> There's an old guy still living in the house we bought. Uh, the only thing in the fridge is a pound of ground meat, some lunch meat. Uh, oh, uh, I made a uh, jalapeno and cheddar. We had, ta- we had taco night tonight. We had taco night. I was burning up about 15 minutes before the podcast. I made, uh, I made Jared a, a steak off. dinner after last night's. Mm. Very mm-hmm. nice. Um, but yeah, that's, there's really not much in there. Jeremy cooks for me on these, uh, <laughs> yes. On these little trips here, which is nice. Yeah. This guy says, uh, Philip, Philip the wise says saddle hunt or tree stand. Tree stand. No doubt. I've I've only attempted a saddle on once, <laughs> and I don't know if I'll ever do it again. It, here's here's I guess Philip, the good question, and you know, and I'm not honestly. I think the the true key there is um, being mobile. Uh, mobile you can be, which saddle and or uh, hang and hunt with a lock on like that. I think either way, you're really successful. Um, I just I, I'm not comfortable with doing everything opposite is the way that I can relate a sound. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's um, every, everything is opposite. It's all backwards, which is fine if that's the way you want to do it, but it's to go back and forth between the two. Cause that's what I said. Like, dude, what set me off on the saddle thing or, or I don't think I would have ever killed that. My first, my first thought when I first saw a saddle was, I was like, that's stupid. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then we had a long conversation with John Eberhardt, who's like, you know, one of the grandfathers of mm-hmm. saddle hunting. And I was like, Hmm, I was like, okay. I mean, this dude, I get it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's explained all the benefits. He's got his name on this. You know, there's a tethered saddle that the, the John Eberhardt signature series saddle, which he sent us. Well, I bought, I bought him. I bought you one. I no. bought you one. Well, he modified them. And I sent them to him and he had some Amish guy modify them. So they weren't exactly straight legal. Mm -hmm. Took the old restrictor plate (laughs) off. Took the old restrictor plate off. Uh And we tried. I mean, I guess if you tried once, I tried a handful of times. How many subscriptions are... Sorry, that's me. And we we watched... Are you trying to get comments? Yeah, I was just going to be able to pull them up here on my phone too. So I could go back further. And I tried it for a while too. And I was just like, I just can't, I can't make this work. And then I sold it to, I saw, you sold yours to Jeremy, to Jeremy. on here. <laughs> and I sold mine to, I sold mine to somebody else. I just, we just couldn't make it work. Did I, we're just like tree stand 
you know, ride or die. And, so, and since we've moved into those, like basically Germanized tree stand setups is like, we have, we have muddies and hawks scattered everywhere. Like mm-hmm. all, all the properties that we hunt have fixed position tree stands in them. Traditionally good spots that we know that are going to produce over and over. Mainly. Yeah. Rust, easy access. Rust spots, funnels, easy access, you know, yep. good, good spots for the dad. It's good spots for us when the time allows. And, um, you know, but the other 50, 60, 70 or more, uh, you know, we've got the lone wolf custom gears that we run and gun. So like even on this Illinois farm, we came out in August and hung one, two, three, four, four, four or five yeah. setups. Mm-hmm. And we haven't hunted any of them. <laughs> we haven't hunted any of them. Yeah. But they're, they're, uh, I hunted one tonight. Oh yeah. I hunted one true. tonight, but I, you know, I've been hunting that pop-up blind, you know, mm-hmm. like that we buy, you know? Yeah. Cause we don't really have a tree there. And, but you went with the lone wolf the first night and killed that box. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it really is like we, we've got all those tools in our arsenal and like, just, I don't know, the saddle just isn't for us. Yeah. And I mean, um, you know, it, it takes time and it's not super, like dead quiet, but I mean, it took me, I don't know, seven minutes, 10 minutes to hang that lone wolf. Oh yeah. dude. If you guys are looking for a run and gun tree stand, that lone wolf custom gear, you have the 0.75. Yeah. And I have the 0.5. I like a little bit bigger platform. Yeah, that's why I got that. I want the smallest platform possible. I know. See, I don't. I don't want to be sitting standing on a saddle platform. Like uh, I want yeah. a little bigger. Yeah, uh, it's and I mean it's still that was super my small. thing with the saddles, dude. I was like, so I have to hang a tree stand and do this thing on top of it. I don't know. Somebody else did it, but um, the I think maybe Novix has it or something. But uh, I uh, so I set that stand last night. And I must have been in a tree that was leaning back. So I had the platform angled down. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got in it, I'm like, oh, shit. And when I was cinching it up, you know, with my front foot, I just, as soon as I cinched it up, I just put it up a couple notches, put it down and perfectly level. Uh, That's freaking sweet. Uh, Um, So, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a great tool to have. When we came out here, we knew we had muddies and we have some more muddies that we could hang. But it was like, we just need our, our running gun sets. Well, and, and Kansas will be the same way. We'll use our running gun sets. There, I mean, there's two main reasons for that. It's like, first of all, neither of us can afford to have Lone Wolf custom gears hanging in every tree. Like, that just doesn't make sense. It's like a th- thousand dollar setup, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it, I mean, it's dialed in. Like, you should have oh. one or two, and that's, you that's know, what you need. That's, that's what you have. That's why they, yeah. The other thing is when we come out to these remote farms, like, and we want to have, uh, you know, stuff hung and ready to go. Like we, where we stop Bass Pro, right? And that's what they have, Bass Pro or Cabela's. Mm-hmm. And you just basically buy them out of muddies. They typically don't have that many in stock, but it's like, we'll take, no. we'll take all the muddies that you have. Yep. And yeah, we buy them all out. Uh, I'm just looking through there. other. This uh, guy's looking for some full shafting merch. Let's, Rendell needs to come out with that. Rendell, yeah. We'll co-op that though. Uh, farm production, Penn Trafford. Yeah, dude, that's PT. Cut, cut my teeth behind the high school there, man. That's That's how I... That's where I killed most of my first year uh, growing up. So there's some giants back there still. Um, Caleb Ott, uh, video on the hanging hunt. Man, uh, I think there's two big processes there. Number one is like actually hanging the stand, which sounds silly, but like y- you got to be quiet and you got to be efficient at it. Um, number two is I think picking the right tree. Uh, and I know Jared kind of led into it earlier. I'm usually, I I kill most of my deer inside 10 yards. I almost pick too close, uh, to where the deer is going to come through or call to. Um, but that, that's part of it. But, um, yeah, that's something we can look at, man. We haven't, we haven't done a lot of content, uh, outside of the podcast. We did some last year when we were in, um, the Dakotas. Is that last year? What we do last year. Uh, content outside of the podcast, like just not podcast content, like other content. Is yeah. that last year we were doing like semi lives and stuff, or is that two years ago? I'm gonna say two years. Holy shit! Yeah, really? Yeah. So, well, we yeah. tried. Yeah, we tried. I mean, that, we that yeah. was the initial thought. Like we thought, you know, <laughs> at one point we're like, hey, we should we should film our hunts. We're thinking about doing some more stuff. We may be if if um. Cody and, and us and Andre, we may do some uh, mobile uh, Hunter Roadshow type sh- stuff in the future here too. So we may be doing some of that uh, a little bit more as well. Uh, Philip, yeah. Infault does a lot of hanging hunts. I mean, that that's... In fact, his, his kind of swamp hanging hunt style is, you know, uh, pretty unique. I think it... I, I don't see a ton of people doing that kind of stuff um, on that end. Um, 
uh alex wants to know if there's any truth to uh this is alex charlton just so you know uh <laughs> if there's any truth, no i will <laughs> if there's any truth to big bucks loving lucky buck oh yeah they love that lucky buck it smells like sure. kool-aid that's a ben rising tip mm-hmm. it smells like kool-aid doesn't little it? spritz a little spritz of the lucky buck <laughs> i don't do it and bay say it's only yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Which, uh, contrary to some of the haters out there, uh, Illinois does not allow bait, and we killed a buck. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's one of the main reasons that we we came, this that bait. we came here. Honestly, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I mean, we don't <laughs> we don't have to go down the whole rabbit hole tonight. Sure. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's a no brainer. I mean, basically, we we've already told you about all of our all the neighbor encounters. Like, dude, we've mm-hmm. met, we've got a lot of neighbors, you know. And if every one of them could go out and dump a you know five hundred pound corn pile, we we'd be in trouble. Yeah, we'd be in trouble. Well, we wouldn't have bought here in the first place because we would have seen that coming. But uh, up full UP uh, is that UP in Michigan full draw? Uh, do land management content? How to build a farm? Uh, we we typically get into the I bought a farm stuff here in the off season. Um, I'm sure we'll do that again. Oh, I love Corey seeing some giant bucks in two B, brother. That's home turf. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, yes. Uh, well, I'm in two C, Corey. I had my number one shooter since I've left. He's daylighted like. A lot. <laughs> Let's just put it, put it this way. My wife was filming him out the uh, bedroom window <laughs> today and sending videos of him. So uh, I'm sure by the time I get back home, he'll be nocturnal or dead. One of the two. But yeah, they they were they were cruising in Pennsylvania hard today and Ohio, which is why it was kind of awkward. Um, maybe we should be questioning Jared's hunting style. I don't know why he's not seeing deer on the farm. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> the worth, wind has been brutal. It's worth though. asking, I guess. I, I mean, mean it, that's the one thing I think. Again, we've never hunted this farm, so we don't know how this wind's going to play out. But there is topography on this thing. There's a lot of drainages, a lot of creeks. Um, I think this wind's just kind of swirling through some stuff here when it comes through. You were in the bottom today. We thought that was going to be the safe bet. Just is what it is, man. That's why I, Illinois has big deer devastated if we had baiting. Yeah. Oh, no doubt, Chris. We talked about that today. I mean, it would it ruin the state uh, in a heartbeat. I, well, I think to just comment on your, you know, not seeing deer thing. I mean, I don't. I guess I don't know how to explain your flurry of activity. Like, I'm glad that happened out of the gate, but like, I, yeah, it seems like well, a, when it's all pre rut activity. It's not like I was in yeah, yeah. like rutting activity or anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, but even just you know, based on our hunts, other than yours so far, and our trail cameras, which we've got seven or eight of them on this property. Yep. A lot of like. 2 a.m. Yep. mature buck movement. And I, you know, that that floppy showed up tonight. Was, Pretty, what was, was that? 7.40? 7.30? It was like an hour and 15 minutes after last light. And we don't know. He may have came from the other side of the road. We did have a new... Um, we had this floppy buck show up last night. We also had a new buck, um, a really, really tank of an eight, show up um, last night after I killed my buck, which was cool. Yeah. Uh, we literally were like, okay, we, we have, a buck first we have three big, big eights to kill. We killed one, and then a new one. And then in. on the way back to the to the house, we're like, "Dude, new giant!" Yeah, that's cool, new giant. So, um, okay, I'll keep reading. I don't know how long. We'll just, I see. I see you, Lauer. We're just gonna keep doing <laughs> this stuff. So I don't know. You guys can say say stay on or leave or uh, continue Frosty. to talk about it. Uh, Justin Onken. Here you go. We so. are in. Um, we are in ag land. Um, I wouldn't say that it's like completely flat because we have some terrain. We've got rivers and stuff running through. But Jared and I are one of the few farms with CRP and cover in a, in a sea of thousands of acre of ag. What's up, Seth Vanderwade? See you. Josh, Seth, Josh yeah. Dulcy says a question. I got a five year old buck and I've had a lot of history with uh, that might be going downhill past him this year because he broke a time. Oof. Oh past five-year-old because he broke a time <laughs> i wouldn't know josh do you live in <laughs> iowa by chance <laughs> yeah yeah uh no man i mean it depends what he is i guess i mean and, it, and his likelihood of living is really what it comes down to like you know some guys live in places where it's like you know they've you know if, if that's a giant high scoring deer and he broke a time and his chances of living are really good and it was a major time then yeah i mean maybe uh, Trevor, if you didn't see this and it's on Instagram, yes, we killed last night. Killed this big mature eight uh, off the new farm last night. What's this? Uh, Conrad says, any trips on, any tips on hunting a buck you're seeing only once? He's a giant 18 pointer with two drop tines. I hunt in Indiana. Could uh, you send me better location? <laughs> and I hunt 10 to 25 acre woods and ditches and tree lines. 
When did you see him, Conrad? We'll we'll kind of continue that one here, Chris. Yeah, like what? Did you get one picture of him, or you saw him once, or what? Chris says, uh, "I watched that show. One of my favorites." Uh, Trevor, you killed last night. Yeah, Jeremy killed one. You just saw that rack. You can go back here and watch it. Old bully buck, eight point. Are you guys going to double sit the next two days? Damn straight, Reeve. Is that? I got who, confidence is in that him. Who asked that? Yeah, Reeve did. Double sit. That means are we going to sit together? Is what he's asking. Oh, double sit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I processed that deer completely. So I caped him this morning. Um, I cut him up tonight. He's in the cooler. So yeah, I mean, I maybe we'll see. Probably not tomorrow morning. Probably not tomorrow morning. Cause I don't know if I could get another, uh, yeah. stand in that tree. Um, it comes, it comes down to like, cause we're multitasking. Like Jeremy's running around. We're posting the I'm property posting. Like, yeah. in the meantime. And we're meeting neighbors and we're, you know, that last day we're going to hustle out of here and hopefully get lunch with, with Dawn. Yeah. Uh, gun season starts the 17th here. Um, and obviously being that I don't know how watched over this property was, we have some, we, we kind of expecting to have some pretty, um, I don't know. We'd have it trespassing issues, I would assume. So we're, we're going around, we're posting uh, purple painting. So yeah, I'm uh, besides processing the deer, that's kind of what I've been. I probably tomorrow morning when I drop Jared off, um, I'll probably cruise. Uh, there's a lot of cut bean fields and corn fields now. I did not see a deer this morning. I had to go get gas. Uh, if anybody saw our Instagram story, I also got Casey's breakfast pizza because that's a tradition in the Midwest when I kill a big buck. Um, or you don't. <laughs> And we still get breakfast. We still breakfast, get breakfast pizza. pizza. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I uh, I did not see a deer 18 miles there and 18 miles back, and it was kind of. That's how it sense. is, dude. Dude, these deer. It's funny. Like at home, like in them suburban areas, we get used to just seeing deer. Like if I I drive I around my farm in Ohio, like you it, say it all the time, you see like 100 deer. Uh, you know, we saw 30 deer tonight, you know, or whatever when we drive around. And I know there's that many deer out here, but they just. I don't know. They're just different. They're more reclusive. Like I think there's just enough areas for them to be out of sight of the roads and stuff. Mm -hmm. There's no. There's no. We, almost, we did almost hit a two year old this morning. I guess was that this morning? Yeah, yeah this morning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just in case you're wondering, I did bring the Miguel. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's catch up on these masses. I'm heading to Illinois tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Been there the last couple of years. Seem to be one week behind what I typically see. Main rut daytime activity happens in Ohio. Interesting. Yeah, maybe the big thing for us, Matt, is um, we have a, a lot of ag around us. And this year, m the majority of it's in corn. Um, and so I think those deer are just hanging on the edges of these cornfields or in cornfields. It is all coming off like as we speak. In fact, we think tomorrow that most of it, if not all of it, will be com coming off. That's also why I think we're seeing new bucks uh, show up pretty pretty frequently. Are you guys getting commercials? I don't know why that does that. I didn't know it was going to do that. Really? Yeah. Commercials. At least it's on mine. I don't know. Oh, sorry, dudes. Yeah. I know this is a brand new farm, but keep the data going. What's that say? New farm, but keep the data going after my number one tomorrow on a one year roll. Three straight years in November first thoughts. Our new farm. But so, keep the data. So in terms of this will be the third year of November first for you on this farm? I assume. I don't know. Tink up give us a little bit more yeah, on that. Keep one. that one going. Do you uh, feel like antler restrictions has made PA better as a whole? Uh being kid, kill six point was a beauty. Um uh, what was the other? Now he said, uh, yeah, uh, the, the two things there, um, pick them deep is, uh, I had to read that twice. I was like, what's that mean? Uh, Andrew, I yeah. Andrew 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 Andrew, yeah. It just gets him to two years old. Um, has been the biggest thing, you know, and high, I, high grades him too. Yeah. I, I do have that big fear. However, like, you know, we our our expectations were so low in Pennsylvania for so long. I do think that the other big thing about the antler restrictions is uh, we lost a lot of hunters uh, because of it. And we continue to lose hunters. So we have less hunters in the state of Pennsylvania than we've ever had, basically. So with that, plus antler restrictions, that's why you're, you know, killing and seeing 120 some forties. I have a I have a buck behind my house, the one that my uh, my wife filmed today. There's a chance, I say chance because a lot of bucks look alike, that I had this buck as a two-year-old in 2017, um, a year after I moved into that house. Yes, that would put that deer ancient. Uh, I hope I kill him and I can tell you it's ancient, but that would like, I wouldn't even dream of that when I was a kid growing up in Pennsylvania. You know, I shot the first spike that I saw until antler restrictions. <laughs> it's, it's tough. I think like we'd all love to see an older age class of bucks like anywhere that we hunt. I mean, that's what yields big antler deer ultimately mm -hmm. 
but it's so hard. Like what, what, what can you implement to achieve that? You know, an antler restriction is, is no, the I mean, state's you, best attempt, right? Yeah. And you can't, you can't, this is where the opportunity thing, you can't choke out opportunity so much to high, to high grade the hunting, like the hunter population to where it's only people who want to kill mature bucks. Sure. Of course not. Um, you know, hunting doesn't survive that way, but yeah, I mean, there. I think that you know, an older age structure is a healthier herd. It's a fact. So, I mean, it should be something that people strive for, agencies strive for, and states strive for. But you know, in Pennsylvania, I I, well, I showed you that one this morning. I had a a pretty studly looking three year old, I would assume, show up on my farm or behind the house yesterday. We saw him yesterday on camera, and they showed up this morning. And so it's like. You know, normally I'd probably kill that deer. Here, here would be my answer to that. I don't have a lot of thought put into this, but I, it, I would rather see, I would rather see, you know, uh, just um, whatever it is. I would rather see be, I would rather see it be harder to kill deer mm -hmm. than to have a, something like an antler restriction in place. Like so, in a, in a state like Pennsylvania, I would almost rather say, yeah, I don't think we need this antler restriction. However, um, the crossbow's got to go. Yeah, <laughs> basically. You know, well, and, and, and antler restrictions that, came in, and then crossbows came in over top. Of right, it. I know, and, and that's just an example. So, I mean, I could point to any any number of things that sure. some, that somebody might say, "Hey, th this makes people really effective at killing deer." That's that was has that's what has an effect on the age structure. Ultimately, that's yeah, mm -hmm. that that answers that question. So, I'd rather go that way. But uh, Carson, what projects do you look forward to in the off season? Oh, oh dude, lot. bro. Well, that's uh, what we're doing now. We're just sitting in the tree stand scheming, scheming. about what needs to happen. Uh, the big thing is we've got to do something with the CRP. Um, because it was mowed, uh, there also isn't a lot of structure in that CRP. Like it's, it's a lot of younger blue stem and stuff like that. We're going to get some switchgrass pockets in there. Um, we've talked about burning it. I don't know if we'll get to that or if we'll just spray and plant. Um, uh, pockets of switch into that stuff. We the the one big one actually the um spot that I killed my buck last night. That deer was walking towards a thirty CRP field, like a giant CRP field. So I think CRP is the biggest one. Number two, and I saw it earlier, so I apologize. I forget who wrote it. Um, it talked about our spray and throw. Um, our food plots did better than we thought, considering how dry it was. Uh, and what we seeded it, we literally seeded it into three to four foot, like mess of shit. And there's, there's one that we haven't seen yet that like might, it might take the cake. I found a, a random turnip that fell out of one of our pockets, apparently on the way into another food plot. And it was large. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, he, here's the one thing I will say about our place in Illinois, and it's in a lot of places, Iowa too, but we have, uh, unbelievable soil. In fact, a, a lot of our, our CRP contracts pay north of $300 per acre. So cash rent in this area is three, $400 per acre usually. Um, so we are in very, very fertile soil. So our throw and grow success, if, if, it has had really good success is probably linked to the soil more than it was our technique. Um, in the off season, Jared and I have already strategized of like, we need to come in, we need to work the soil. We need to get like substantially better food plots growing. Um, that said, what we do have uh, in place from food for this year, I'm super excited for that Thanksgiving to a week or two later. Like when these bucks put the feed bags back on, Mm -hmm. I, I think we're going to be in the chips there. We have rye, if nothing else. Yeah, there's rye. We, we put rye into everything and it, it grew. So, yeah. Uh, John, that's awesome. Uh, Rendell, you John don't Bucks. know. You don't know anybody that killed a 200 inch deer on public. Get out of here. <laughs> You're crazy. Rendell, where are you, where are you hunting? Let us know. Because uh, <laughs> I know you said all your bucks got killed. You're going to go back south. That sucks. Not sarcastically. We got to get you boys over to Springfield for a horseshoe at Darcy's. I'll buy the beers. Okay. I like that. Cheers, John, John said, first year compound hunting using the yeah, saddle. Yeah. Get closer to the spot. Seen deer a week ago. 11 deer. Yep. Yep. Awesome, dude. Listen, man. Uh, first year compound style. Just just grind it. Uh, I, I remember my dad watching me miss, I think, a button buck like three times from my tree stand. Uh, the first year I bow hunted and you could just hear the arrow through the soybeans like and eventually I, I hit it because it was stupid and killed it. But yeah, man, just keep grinding it out. Um, you know, if we can ever help with tips, just let us know. 
Uh, Jordan said, anyone hunted the Ozark? So Jordan, I lived for a while and I did make a couple trips down there uh, on the Missouri border of, of Arkansas. Um, honestly, it is a lot like my Kentucky uh, area. I've got a lot of these kind of like bigger knobs, huge hardwoods, uh, not really any ag. If there is open, it's pasture ground. Um, and so that's what I've converted and yeah, tough hunting, but honestly, that's kind of, Jared knows this, this Illinois farm is way out of my comfort zone. I'm a, I'm a big woods, small food plots, like just play the terrain and, you know, cover ground. And so this, like we talked about it earlier, the majority of this farm being open is awkward for me. Yeah. But how many edges do we have to work with? That's that's fine. Oh, a ton. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot more like my Ohio farm. It's ag yeah. country. Yeah, I mean, eat way more. I don't know. This is the only farm I own in ag country. Yeah. So yeah, it's just awkward. We've got nothing. You know, we got nothing but e- edges and like funnels. And so I mean, the next question here is Brian asks: this being a new property, what sets do you have set up, uh, and and where are you targeting on the farms? I mean, it's funny, dude. Funnels it, and pinch points, it, it, right? Yeah. Well, in, in country like this too, like you and I knew before we even got here. In fact, when we were walking around with the realtor, I was like, hey, I want to go over and look at this. I want to look at this. Mm-hmm. And there's... Yeah, we looked at the map. We studied it. Yeah. I mean, the, the topography will tell you kind of like where to go. I mean, there's lots of information about there, you know, as far as like leeward ridges and, uh, you know, technically, I guess you could kind of call where you killed your buck the other day, like a thermal hub. That's kind of a buzzword right now. It's, it's just a, it's a bottom, you know, it's a creek bottom that runs mm-hmm. through ag country in Illinois. Yeah, in between uh, basically two bedding areas, essentially. It's not rocket with a creek running through them. Yeah. So I would say our initial sets, we do have a couple on food, but most of the sets that we did and, and targeted were pinch points and funnels, uh, knowing that we probably were going to hunt it during and and some food cruising. sources. Like our, yeah. our food plots, we set some up like just with good access. We are moving our cameras right now or this week. We're moving our cameras more towards food. Uh, we do have a couple that will still be on scrapes. There's a couple key scrapes that we just know are going to be good. Which, by the way, did was there a buck on um, uh, bullpen? You said you got a picture on that. I don't know. I haven't been checking. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, we got a picture of something. I didn't, yeah. I didn't look. Uh, we, we do have a couple cameras still on scrapes, but we're p- repositioning most of our cameras onto food, planning that we probably won't be back until we, we go to Kansas here in a little bit. So we probably won't be back till the third end of the week month. in November. Somebody else asked that when we're going to Kansas. Um, week before Thanksgiving. Let's see. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Conrad. Okay. Back to the eight point three days ago, trail cam picks of him since August, only one pick of daylight. D- that doesn't matter, dude. Uh, also, do you guys have cameras on scrapes. I just said, so we, we've, all of our cameras have been on scrapes basically and or tight funnels. Uh, but we're moving them Dude, towards we, food. We've got one scrape on this farm. That's just like, when we looked at it on the map, I was like, every deer in the County is going to hit this scrape. And, awesome. and they have Yep, uh, hunting lots of ag 50 to hundred acres of woods. Okay. So Conrad, I would say if you're still knowing that that deer is in the area, you just got to play the weather fronts and find pinches. Bullpen. Which deer is that? That's that eight that we're like I we were on the fence if he's a shooter or not. Is it coming out of pinch of pinch the other day with a kicker too? Yeah, I'll pull him up for you. He was in I don't know if it was daylight or not. Just nice, nice camera move. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's a uh, hundred yards. Just killed my buck. So uh, I'm gonna keep reading. Uh, Sean Hobaugh. I might yeah, sh- representing. I'm gonna shoot that buck tomorrow Can't, morning, dude. Uh, oh, Sean, I don't. Uh, <laughs> it would be fun. Maybe. I, I'm not going to throw it out there. What's he saying? Sean wants to do a live podcast at Kansas Deer Camp with the dads. Mm-hmm. It would be fun. I'm all about it. Um, I don't know what our internet situation is. Obviously, it's not the greatest here, but um, we'll see. Maybe. If not, fun. we'll we'll figure out something. But yeah, Dude, we drank be so much beer at the last Kansas beer. Yeah, Jared and I've been beer camp is what we I basically said. have only drank a twelve pack. Uh, <laughs> but although we've only been here for thirty six hours, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we drained the well. Um, uh, Woody Wood, uh, our rut comes in at four on Thursday. That specific, I like that. Four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, be there. Uh, Lance, ethics question: Do you guys? Do you use cell cam pictures during the hunt to your advantage? If you get a picture of a buck, would you move? Okay. I think that's a great question. Um, first off, I do not you I would not move. Um, I check my cell cams while I'm in the tree stand because I'm bored. Um, I, I would say that the only 
That's a tough one. Well, I'm trans. I'll, I'm transparent. The only thing I would say it's snowing at home, by the way, right now. Really? Yeah. The only thing I would say of being an advantage during a hunt is if I get a picture of a buck that I want to kill relatively close, I may call a rattle knowing that he's on that camera Mm -hmm. and that's being transparent. So yes, I I would say that I would use them as an advantage. Uh, but no, I wouldn't get up and move. Um, I'd be lying that w- when cell cams first came out, I got a picture of a shooter behind my house in Pennsylvania. I left my house or left work and went straight out there. Of course, I didn't. See Who it. hasn't, dude? I mean, that's what they made cell cams for. <laughs> yeah, but so that's a good one. Uh, pick them deep. Love good transition. And the Northeast, thick bedding area that opens up in a heart. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, that's that's my style. That's how I hunt. That's how my Kentucky and, and Ohio places. My Ohio place is getting timbered right now. So that's kind of throwing a little bit of hitch into stuff. But I had a really good four-year-old cruising at 2.30 today, regardless of timber. Uh, okay. Uh, Droopy. No commercials. There you go, buddy. Awesome. Uh, Conrad. Uh, three days ago. At this, is, this is from a prior commercial. So, or, so C- Conrad... Forget. Uh, unfortunately Comment. that was a chance. Uh, and I don't know if you'll get another one the rest of the year. That's not being a Debbie downer. It's just, if he's a big smart buck, you get one, maybe two. Six, seven months. Great. I mean, he's it. in there. What, though, what man. was the original question? What was he asking? He, he Any just, tips? Yeah, just tips. Get in there. I mean, they're going to start running does around. I mean, you're, I play you're, a weather front. In fact, I don't know where you're at here. What are you doing tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow's, <laughs> tomorrow's yeah. probably the best day that we're going to have. The, the pressure is just through the roof. Bluebird skies. Wind's going to die down. Winds were blowing hard today. Yeah. Matt J killed on the 24th here in PA. Oh, dude. October 24th has been a day nice, for me. Matt. Although I think the weather was kind of shitty that day this year. So, now I'm like, what do I do? Story of my life, bro. Like, uh, yep. that, that is why I bought in Kentucky and then have continued to buy in other states. The problem is now is like, uh, I think I said it earlier on the way here. And while here, my number one PA buck has just been daylight like crazy. You can only hunt so much. You can only be in so many places at once. So inevitably you'll miss opportunities, but, um, yeah, man, it's, uh, it, if you can't afford land or a lease, I would find public in Ohio, dude. Uh, or, or whatever state's close to you, man. Just there's something about being out in the woods and just being able to hunt is is better than not. So Skalma says he's got bucks locked down already. That's Get crazy. out of here, Skalma. You're crazy. <laughs> uh, they're just mommy, mommy and Jordan son. says uh, y'all should do a road trip podcast like in the truck. Call it corn piles and crossbow. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mike Duvall uh, says, PA public yeah, Mike could use less hunters. Mike, that's a good. Yeah. The the weird thing is, is we um we went and hunted with Steve Shirk up in Allegheny National Forest during the uh, muzzleloader Did, and let me let me tell you this. And I, I know guys that are hunting that national forest, and like I know yeah. we we hunted last year, and like you know just didn't see anything. But mm-hmm. I know guys up there that have a lot better deer than I have in Ohio. Yeah. Well, like, oh, there's giants. Like there. giants. That one I saw was a really big buck. Yeah. Um, it was a stud. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they're in there. It's just, they got a lot of room to go. And I don't think that there's the, I don't think that you can pattern those deer very easily. Yeah. And that, and that's kind of like on its own though. There is a lot of public throughout Pennsylvania, like, you know, raccoon straight state park gets pounded. Yeah. I'm sure every the time I drive, lands every time I drive past her on the way to my farm, there's 10 trucks. Yeah. I mean, there. I grew up hunting game lands. I've, I've seen and killed, good bucks on game lands in the past. So, but yeah, it, it, for it, the it, record, I killed that 160 North goat on public land. Mm-hmm. It's <laughs> Yeah, Nick. <laughs> uh, let's see right here. He's a monster buck. Super wide. Oh, this is yep. here. Hunting it. Dude, I hope you get them. There's a lot of people that I know of on this buck. Alex, yeah. There always is. Anytime Nick, there's a big Conrad, buck. Good. Pick them deep. Conrad. Uh, Josh on a 600 acre farm in Ohio. Have a lot of nice deer. And the one I passed up was a big eight. So if I made a recall, Oh, there you go, Josh. So you passed that five, dude, you got 600 acres in Ohio. I, I personally believe the next two and a half to three weeks, depending on if you have food, Jared and I talked about this earlier. Um, if, if your farms and traditionally mine don't have food, when I get to Thanksgiving, I'm screwed. My farms just die there there's nothing on there's no box to kill let me put it that i can kill those but there's no box um so if you've got a 600 acre farm and you've got food uh we've talked about it i think that that thanksgiving and and right before gun season in ohio time period is critical what's the um, question what's he asking he he's the one who passed the five-year-old buck remember i said yep. oh josh i bet you're in iowa no he's in ohio it's a okay. 600 acre farm boy <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't pass them. <laughs> well, look, here's the question, Josh. You have something what, bigger? 
we'll find out. Uh, I mean, dude, I'll say this real quickly. This time coming up here, this third week of November, uh, those, those core piles are just deadly. I mean, that, that's when the youth season starts coming up there and yeah. they start getting dumped and your buck's going to uh, Zach Jacoby, TikTok. Is, uh, Jack, Zach, are you telling us that we are the most hated hunters on TikTok? That's very possible. Very possible. Yep. Mike, we love you. Uh, Arkansas has three on a side. Oh, interesting. I mean, I'm sure that's making a difference down there. Um, I know on the river and stuff, Oops. it's really good. It skips down every once in a while. I think it's like right there. Getting behind. Nope. Go down. Okay. Uh, Philip, how much land can you plant in Illinois? Ooh, good question. So we are allowed to plant 10% of a field that is in CRP. So um, for instance, there is literally a 30 acre CRP field right by where I kill my buck. We could plant three acres of that field in food plots and still fall under um, the requirements for CRP, which is really cool. And so we kind of did that in a rough way, I guess, uh, when we did our spray and throw. But um, yeah, I think it was kind of, you know, moving forward, we've got a much better strategy on how we want to accomplish those things. For the record, I did have a complete failure with spray and throw in Ohio this year. You did. And I don't, which is crazy. I don't know what to chalk that up to. I mean, I guess this, dude, I <laughs> I don't know. I, Cause this is, this was the, we talked about potential seed failures. I mean, I know that there's old seed floating out there. I mean, that I, I had a, a uh, complete failure on my corn in Ohio, but I think that was because I got hit with a late freeze. Yeah. I planted that earlier, like late April, and I think I got toasted with a freeze. Yeah, I guess we got lucky out here with that. It worked. Uh, Woody, Conrad, Conrad. Good tip. There you go. Conrad. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Ross, CRP over the land taxes then, or is land tax low though? Uh, our taxes are pretty low, although this property does have um, a house and structures on it. The, the farmer that we bought it from is still living in the house. But the CRP prices are astronomical because we are in some of the better ag production land in the state. So, um, so yeah, it, it CRP pays for the taxes and then pretty much everything else we need to do on the farm from a management side, I would say. Uh, uh, UP full draw. Kansas states, we leave on the 9th. So I think we start hunting the 10th of November through like the 17th or 18th. Um, that's the plan. I mount over 300 head a year. We Whoa. average five. Yeah, it's a lot, dude. It adds up. Wow. Taxidermy bill. You get three to five, two hundreds a year. Chris, that's a really cool fact, man. I, I, you know, we talk about how rare mature buck. How rare is a 200? And the fact that you're seeing three to five is saying something pretty impressive. Um, have you ever been to, you've been to Trap Shop, right? No. I'll have to take you sometime. Yeah. He's he, got, he's got a, uh, he's got a safe, like with the big, the big heads in it. I didn't tell you this when we went in there. Um, no joke, because I took my uncle mm -hmm. last time when he shot his buck, and I said, "Hey, Trav, I said, why don't you show him? Show him what's in the safe." He opened it up, and where he's kind of picking through them, showing him. He's got a couple one eighties and stuff in there, and I, I was like, "That's a freaking whopper right there." It was my dad's laying on the bottom of it. Uh, All the other ones were sitting inside of it. That's a fine. big eight from last year. Uh, Jackson, Kentucky. So I am in uh, like East Central, so I'm south of Moorhead. Uh, if you know where that area is, uh, Chris. Oh, okay. Chris, you're over on the east side. Yeah, so we're probably about an hour and a half from you. John Bucks, that's cool. He says his legs are shaking after that. And Ken, that's so dude to shot Bro. the compound. You tell him how much you were shaking the other day. Dude, it's it's no joke. It's uncontrollable. I mean, I've killed a I've killed a lot of bucks. I've killed a lot of bucks with my bow, uh, a lot of good bucks. And I still uh in fact I think I I when I talked to you and I FaceTime uh Emily and the kids, I mean I was I was shaking I uncontrollable. I just, I was trying to sit down. It was like, it's like if you have hypothermia, I, I don't, that's the only thing I could relate it to. Like <laughs> you just is uncontrollable and just trying to breathe through it. Um, but man, if I ever lose that feeling, then I've, I've done screwed up basically. Dude, I have, I've never shook more. I don't think than that the morning that I saw that North Dakota buck in velvet when Lucas oh, really? and I were, dude, it was just like, it was one of those mornings where, and it was like, you know, the travel has, Sure. You know, there's like a fatigue. Exactly. There's a fatigue there, but also the, just the excitement, like the adventure that's going on there. And like, dude, we saw a, free, a giant buck and we could hear him coming and stuff. And it's like, I, 
yeah, I didn't want it to stop. Like I just, I, I was like, man, this is annoying that I can't stand because I'm shaking so bad. But yeah. I was like, this is, I don't want it to stop. I was like, this is, this is what we're doing it for. Uh, Adam, back to, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Adam, I don't know if you knew this. My wife is actually a deer biologist for MDC for five years um, when we lived out there. And it was really interesting to see, I mean, that, that gun season at that time was, and this is a guy coming from Pennsylvania who grew up and it sounded like the civil war uh, was something else, man. I hunted some of the uh, conservation areas that were bucks only during the first part of gun season. And uh, it sounded like a war zone. And so I don't, I don't understand how they, they continue to get away with that and still produce giant bucks. I know that they went from three bucks to two bucks, but, pretty wild that they they've gotten into that side uh i'm gonna drop down to philip do you think banning of cell cams would make us a better hunter if you're talking about skill philip yeah no doubt in my mind man um and on and here's here's a kind of a loaded question or, or statement around it is i think that those who had grown up without cameras and cell cameras or got into hunting without those have the woodsmanship to be like really lethal right now. Um, those who are coming into hunting and have only ever used cell cams, if they took them away, they would be, they would quit probably. Uh, cause I don't think they have any idea what they're doing out there. Hmm. Like none. It is fun to imagine. Like, I mean, as much as we love the cell cameras, like it, it would be, it would be crazy. Well, I, I'm not for banning of cell cameras yeah, at yeah. all. Neither um, I. I, I, the thing is, is though I, you know, if so, again, it kind of goes back to if somebody said, well, if you could only use a trad bow versus your compound, or, oh, then I use a trad bow. Like if somebody told me that I had to hunt harder to just hunt, I would do it. Um, I'd rather them take stuff away and make it harder than give us more stuff to make it easier. Uh, what SD cards? I always forget that too, Jeremy. What uh, the it's cards? the, um, so I'm using whatever sand disc and stuff. They're, the the big thing is that they're called U3s. So most of your cheap um, SD cards are U1. And it doesn't matter if they're class 10 or whatever the heck it is. Um, but the key is the U3. And, and it'll be substantially more expensive. Like, I don't know, double the price. But that U3 allows it, uh, it essentially can process things faster. Now, here, here's the other thing I'll tell you is I, I have pretty much every possible cell cam manufacturer just for use and testing purposes. Um, there are some that still doesn't matter if I have them in or not. Uh, if I check that card, there'll be five times as many pictures as I got to my app. It's just how it is. Um, I train app a hundred percent truth. I've never had that problem with muddy and stealth. If I check a, a SD card, I would say 98% of the pictures are, are on my app. Dude, um, they they really have been legit too. I know like, everybody has problems w with all of these. It's technology, guys. Like yeah. it, it, I'm I'm not saying it just because like we know those guys and they back us. It's it literally is the one camera, and I've got nothing against some of these other ones. I mean, I spent 500 bucks on Reconyx to test them, and I, I mean, I'm talking. I had maybe 40 450 to 500 pictures on my app, and I had 5,000 pictures on the SD card. And that wasn't at like burst and stuff. That was like minute delays trying to like just take pictures. It just, and, and probably they're going to say, you know, well, that's on you. You don't have good service. Well, the other cameras are in the same farm and they're fine. So here's what works. Yeah. yeah. But that's what it is. Uh, Philip says, do you have space in Illinois to plant soybeans or corn Ooh, next year? We do. We're having some discussions on that. We have two uh, hay fields that are about what? Six acres in total. Uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, they're actually in really nice clover and alfalfa. Uh, we would love to convert those to a grain, um, corn or beans and use that as a destination grain plot and then be able to stage our hunting plots around that. Uh, we'll probably try to work a deal with a local farmer. Um, you know, maybe at, we have an eight acre field that they pay us cash rent on we may let them farm that eight acre field for free in exchange for planting that six acre field. Um, Phillips also us. asking if we've seen a, a major increase in property taxes in certain states versus others. We have not, but I mean, in our home state, uh, Beaver County, which Jared and I sell property in, just had a reassessment uh, that like 
times 10. People are losing their houses. Yeah, people stuff. people yeah. who have paid this, we talked about this, sir. People who have paid for their houses, own their houses outright, no mortgage, are going to have to sell their houses because they can't afford the property taxes. A lot of people on fixed incomes. Um, Chris Park, I'll, I'll give a maybe a better update on a later podcast. But yeah, we're, we're chugging along with the work at my family farm. We're, uh, I'm burning the last of that like wasted uh, pasture acreage this coming uh, February. So that's seeming to make a big impact. I mean, Brian killed a nice big four-year-old buck, which is our goal there uh, on that farm this year. So I mean, yeah, yes. It's it improving. looked good when we were there this summer. Moving yeah, stuff around. absolutely. It's improving. Some of those burns in the first year grew. Four feet. I mean, right now we're standing four, five foot tall. Yeah, it's awesome. With, I don't know what, weeds. So, yeah. <laughs> but I'll take um, Conrad, thanks guys. If you want to come to India, appreciate it, dude. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow up on some of this stuff here. Uh, by the way, you guys are my favorite podcast. Appreciate it. Sand SanDisk SD cards work well on my cameras. Yep, yep, I agree. Work fine. Laura, Laura wants to know the <laughs> brand of my base layers are. Dude, we we're Laura, talking about this today. Did. Dude, listen, I saw Bill Winky wearing these base layers like 10 years ago, and I was yeah. like, I got to have them. I'm wearing Cabela's. my still, uh, Cabela's base layers. My uh, Under Armour 3.0. I've had these for about a decade as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, Truthfully, I've been wearing these since we got here. I know. So. I've been taking them off. Yeah, yeah. We did We did shower. Not together. <laughs> uh, um, what do we got? That farm will be better in the future when you guys get to know about it. Oh, no doubt, Chris. Sure. We're stoked about it. We, I mean, we kept a buck on it, so we, we're getting a hang. Um, Kyle says, congrats on the buck. My buddy hit one this morning. Quartered away, liver, guts, uh -huh. hit offside, back leg, guts. Were hang How do you hit the opposite back leg if it was quartered away? We're hanging out, almost touching the ground. I mean, yeah, the deer will die. Yes. Yeah, honestly, just a matter of how far and how long. Well, I'll tell you what, and I, I didn't think that I caught lung uh, on mine, but once we actually skinned it out, we realized that he did. But uh, I destroyed that liver, and that's what killed that deer in twenty five yards. That liver, I mean, a liver hit will bleed that deer out really, really fast. A liver nick or something, yeah, that deer's gonna live, but that deer's dead. Uh, honestly, it may he may already be dead. I bet you have a really tough time finding blood. Unfortunately, that's yeah. a that's a tough track. Call the drone, call the call uh, drone guys, dude. Call up um, Mike, Mike from Drone Deer Recovery. Yeah, call the Drone Deer Recovery. They get all kind of people. They, they it's five hundred dollars to come out and fly the drone, but they pretty much guarantee they'll find the deer. Yeah, so. I agree. Can you guys do a podcast on bow hunting and fitness? I say this as uh, I'm recovering from a torn rotator cuff and a C joint. Oh, dude, I I had a partial turn uh, torn rotator cuff last year. Um, which fortunately was in my draw arm. If it was in my uh, stabilized bow hand, I would have been, I, I was been out. I can't, you couldn't do it. I couldn't hold anything that far, but because it was in my draw, it was fine. Um, we, we should though at some, I mean, not the whole podcast has to be like fitness related, but like dude, we, we do a lot during yeah. off season. I mean, especially when we have September hunts coming up, like we, yeah, we're at 15 miles the other day. We get after it. Wow. So <laughs> yeah, we're just hitting for 50 miles. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when when this time of year rolls around, I I literally plan for and oh, intend to just miss. I'm trying to my just body. I'm, I'm like, just trying to get through. Here's why. Like, I mean, uh, did you see how far how far was it from my truck to that spot? Like point two or point three, something like that. From where? Uh, the trail that I marked for you. I don't know. Anna. I think it was like point two three, but let's just say point three. So you're talking about. Um, what 600 yards or something like i don't want to i don't want to get to that spot and be out of breath mm. and then try to hang a stand and then be s soaked in sweat like that's miserable well, um, dude, have you ever thought about like when you're and i'm not strong jared's strong i'm yeah. cardio fit i'm just not strong dude, there's a reason i mean most guys of i don't know what the cutoff age is but most older guys like you hit a point where you're like it's not safe to run and gun like it's no. not, as, you know, I can't imagine. Can you imagine the Eberhard? He's like in his seventies doing that stuff. That's amazing. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. But yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, dude, I, you know, I love my dad, obviously, but I can barely trust him to hang like a regular <laughs> tree stand, like with all, like drive the UTV right up to it, you know? And so I think about that sometimes when we're like, you got to walk a mile in, you know, and, and know. hang the stand that you carried in there. I mean, dude, just even walking that 200 yards to the blind the other day, carrying that decoy on my shoulder with like my full pack. All my, I'm all I know, man. garbed up. Dude, hunt, hunt's hard. Well, that's how Kansas you're going to, we're kind of in between of like, are we running and gunning in public? Are we running and gunning on these <laughs> private? Like we don't that's, know. That's what we do in Kansas guys. We basically like, we pick the two most, the, the bet, the highest odds, most accessible spots. And we put the dads in them and we, you know, we get them there. And then Jeremy and I kind of tail off and try to figure something out for ourselves. So find one. If, 
Um, Here you go. If you guys need any uh, plots, oh, yeah, mode, or Alex, sprayed, reach out. I'm just north it, of Illinois. Stay yeah, you're line. not far from us. I'd love to help you guys out if needed. Word. Thanks, dude. Yep, Jordan. Elk shape. Yep, those guys do a ton of stuff. Ooh. Uh, go look up Elk shape. What's that guy's name? I don't remember. For that Philip, for real. Maybe that's the guy's name. We should have him on. That'd be cool. Uh, I have probably four bigger. Oh, this uh, is this in Ohio. Yep. That are still mature. And a lot of food. Yeah, dude, you're good. But you, Jared's you probably right about the corn piles in Ohio gun season. You, he is. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's tough. Uh, I mean, the fact that he made the five is pretty amazing. I mean, how many other five-year-olds you got running around? Probably not many. Yeah, I think Garrett, you got four bigger and they're mature. Yeah, you're you're in good shape. Uh, gave Jared Mills. Oh, yeah. The monster buck stuff. Um, I am actually talking with those guys right now about trying to test some stuff and do some things with them. Um, so, yeah, th- it's... Uh, I know Jared's in in on that. Um, I know that I know the parent company behind those uh, guys, and it's a very high quality seed production company. So, yeah, um, I think it's good stuff. I like uh, pick them deep. Says Philip. All I'll say is recover, lift when you can, get your reps in with your bow, lower the poundage, and see. Yeah, I'm all for that. I've always said there's no such thing as overtraining, just under eating. <laughs> yeah, that's because you're still young. <laughs> Bye. Buying a oh, Michigan farm man. next? I don't know. Probably not. No. If you guys uh, have a row crop that you lease to a farmer, how is the lease structured? Uh, it's uh, per acre. So just they pay us a cash rent per acre. Uh, it's in this year. It's beans. Surprisingly, those beans are still standing when most are not. Um, but it's small. Uh, it's it's only eight acres, I think. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, the hope is is that next year we can restructure that to where we let them use that for free in exchange for planting that six acres. Uh, big boys. I don't know that. Would you guys ever hunt Saskatchewan? Yep. Yes. Yes, we would. Yeah, Damien, we've been talking about Saskatchewan, Alberta. Uh, I used to go up to um, Winnipeg uh, in Manitoba as well, just for work stuff. And yeah, it's on the docket, man. We 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 need to do that. We we talked about doing a a, a duplicate or a not duplicate a double a mule deer whitetail combo mm-hmm. um, up there in like Alberta or Saskatchewan would be really cool. Which got <laughs> scrolling. All good comments, dude. Appreciate you guys writing all this stuff. In. Yeah, cool. daily YouTuber. Dude. I think I saw you're from uh, our area, Western PA. Uh, those spy points are shit. Running ten Sorry. muddy cells, no right. issues so far, dude. I will say, like, man, we. How many times did I call you about the Moultrie mobiles? Like, and it's been a oh. long time, but we used to run those with the old eight eight eights and the separate packs. And I was like, literally wanted to punt those things every time I would go, and they wouldn't connect or whatever yeah. was going. I mean, on. I, I I've got I've got problems with a lot of my cameras. I won't mention the brands because it's not worth throwing them under the bus. But my stealth and muddies have been solid. If you have problems with stealth and muddies, I'm just telling you, it's probably not going to get any better unless. You're in a situation where you don't have service in which uh, cutty back link systems might be the only option. Doug says, uh, do you guys plan to shed hunt these properties? Oh. Did the previous owner give you any sheds when you bought the Illinois piece? I guess we can be transparent about this now that we own it. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, we plan on shed hunting. Uh, yeah, we there were giants. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, honestly, there was just sheds laying out in the barn and we're like, that's ours now. <laughs> yeah, we he had a, uh, a set from a few years ago of what we believe is a three-year-old with double drops that was probably in the mid seventies. Um, he also found a lot of dead deer on the property. Like, I don't know if they got shot. And he also up. has probably never been into the, uh, that was just driving around. Like. He has a, he has a mainframe eight that's over one ninety five uh, on his wall. So that came off of it, but this is this, a guy who's lived here his entire life. So, who knows? Oh, um, interesting. So this, I'm sorry to cut you off, Jeremy. So yep. in Illinois, drones can't be used. If you use one to find your deer, you can't recover it. You have to let it rot. Wow, that's the drone dumb. guys did a podcast on it. Yeah, I saw the... I saw the. Can you use tracking dogs? Yeah, I don't know. That I would, seems stupid. I would assume I, I'm, so. I'm, those, are, those rules are dumb. Well, the, the goal well, is, is to recover an animal in any way possible. There is a line, though. I mean, I can't believe they don't have just like a time frame. Because of, of an abuse of it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's a trust factor. If there's a law and you break the law, it's just like anything else. But if if there's a law in place that says you can't use them to find well, a deer, it screws it up for everybody else. But it's hard because the law is in opposition to like what's ethical. So like, what do you mean? If so, I mean, if I hit the deer and I'm trying to find it, 
what's what's ethical about not what what's ethical about so using the ethical a drone? thing would be to use the drone yeah find the deer go shoot it correct the law says you can't do that the law i know says, that's well, why that's why i'm saying the law is stupid i'm agreeing with you oh okay yeah but <laughs> well, well no no i think you should be able to use the drone yeah but they're trying to prevent using the abuse. drone and hunt and then hunting yeah abuse of it but that's just like what happens law that you break it's like yeah saying, well, but you it's can't, you can't drive junk it's the law well you can do it still no it's not like that though because the point is literally to find the deer and hopefully it's dead and mm -hmm. then you can go recover it and that's still legal but it shouldn't be that's dumb but if you find it with the drone and it's alive then what do you do well it's just like uh, you know and i think it's really gray and i, I don't I'm not ethically, break the law. ethically, ethically, you go put another arrow in it. So, case in point, legally, you hit a buck. Can't do it in the evening. At night, you go track it. Deer still alive. Yep. How many states are you allowed to shoot that deer at night? I don't know. I don't know of any. I don't know if you can. I don't think you can. That seems crazy. Yeah, it's shooting them under a spotlight is what it is. That seems nuts. You're right. You're right. Is it illegal? Let me ask you this: Is it illegal to just to kill it? Like we have to knife it or drown it or I have no, that's why I think it's stupid. <laughs> I, I mean, we said in Pennsylvania, one thing we didn't talk about is I, and again, cause we're pretty transparent. I shot a doe uh, last Saturday with my recurve in Pennsylvania. I did not recover it. Um, learning experience, I guess. I practice my recurve a lot. In fact, I, I put my compound away um, for quite a while and just exclusively hunted and shot the recurve. Um, close shot. She, she maybe was a touch quarter two, but I felt really good about it. And I, I just caught too much shoulder blade. I, I couldn't believe, uh, how much I couldn't believe how little penetration I got. Um, so, uh, I followed her. In fact, Emily and the kids came up. I for sure caught one lung. I got enough penetration for one lung. I found a decent amount of blood. I tracked her for 350 yards. The ne that afternoon, I went and looked. I did not find her. Uh, but where I'm going with that is case in point is that if that was on Saturday, if I would have walked on Sunday and found her and needed to put another arrow in her, it would have been illegal in Pennsylvania, which is so stupid. I think that those are the dumbest rules um, ever. So... Um, where are we at here? Uh, Jordan, I have a legit question. Just know I'm against crossbow thing too, but just curious to what your reasons are wanting them off. Great. Okay. First off, I am for crossbows for youth, disabled, and seniors. I love them. I really, I really think that they're a great transitional weapon for all of those scenarios that you said. And I also would be, if, if there was a way to regulate it, I would be in favor of anyone in the first even two seasons of hunting having a hunting license, like brand new into hunting, yeah. being able to use them too. Yeah. I'm not in favor of the able-bodied use of them. Um, and, and for two reasons. Number one is I think that it brings way too many people into the archery season of which is too long to have that many people hunting effectively that so, overuse of the resources here. So the land and the herd number one. Yep. Number one. Well, I think it's why we're losing access. Uh, cause people are buying up Dude, private land. You know and what? I think why people think public land sucks is because you've got all these, and I don't mean to like segment them, but you've got all these gun hunters who now can come into a longer archery season and hunt whenever they want. And it, it, it just, it's too many people. Everybody, I'm sure there's nobody in this chat, anybody who's gun hunted, right? If you go out opening day gun season, guess what? You expect a shitload of people to be out. It's opening day gun season. Like, it's expected. What's not expected is being able to go out on a Saturday in archery season and not being able to find a parking spot on public land because there's guys hunting all over the place. Dude, I was home. thinking about it even tonight, even at our farm. Dude, it's like, if you... It, we're constantly at odds with this question. It's like, you know, people say hunter numbers are declining and, and our rebuttal is like, okay, well, why does it seem like there's so many freaking hunters? It's like, hmm. go, fi go find me, go just go get permission then. Go, might, go get access. It if might be less, if there's not that many hunters. Less then, hunters, but they're hunting more. Right. Way more. 
Way more. The, the hunter days, like the number of days hunters are out in the field has dramatically increased and you don't hear anybody talking about that. And listen, I'm okay with that. I th- I, th- I don't love it. I mean, I... I like that people are in the woods. I like people are hunting, but, yeah. but there's not enough... It, it's... It was too much of a change. That paired with what happened with COVID blew this thing out of the water. Well, it's a trade-off. So it's like you have more opportunity to shoot this you know, weapon that requires less practice and it's mm-hmm. more capable in some ways. But the result of that is you lose access. So you have less opportunity in that sense yeah. because you know more people are in, the, are in the woods more often. And if you guys haven't listened to it, th- this is kind of the basis of the, the Higgins podcast we just dropped today. So... That's a big one. Uh, I, I would also just because I I don't I'll do whatever those guys really or and women want. Like I'd be for active military using it as well. Like you got limited time. Um, so th- those would be the groups that I'm in favor for uh, being able to use it. Um, but yeah, I mean it's just I, I just think that this comes back to the retention side where more people for longer time periods in the woods creates shittier hunting experiences. And we're losing people that way. So, oh, Matthew Hart, do you have any recommendations for bow shops in Western PA? Uh, Go to um, Ultimate Outdoors, Ultimate Outdoors in Holiday Park. Yeah, tell them right by Monroeville. Tell them Jared sent you. That's Tim and Jason run that shop. They do a really nice shop. They're a Hoyt and Matthews and Bowtech dealer, but I think they'll work on anything. Yep, they're awesome. Uh, let's see your recommendations. It's not archery. Jen Recovery has a lawsuit against Michigan DNR for not being able to come to, come to Michigan. Yep. Smart, I get the man. fine line. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Got to. Uh, Philip, uh, you know, injured and still won't use one. You kind of sound like my, <laughs> my dad who is gone through and going through cancer. And like, I'm like, dude, just use one. And he won't. <laughs> so well, dude, mark, mark my words. I'll hunt with a crossbow someday. I mean, I, I'm not going to not the, hunt. Yeah. That's it. I was going to say the, the option is you, use a crossbow and hunt or you don't hunt, I will, I'll hunt with a crossbow. Like I, I, I don't, my kids hunt with a crossbow. My, my, uh, both of my kids, um, hunt with a crossbow. Harlan's killed two bucks now with a crossbow. Mm-hmm. It's, it's an awesome tool, but at, at the same time, we're going to go to ultimate outdoors and I'm going to fit both of them with compound bows here in the off season. I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to force them to use it next year if they're not ready, but we're starting that transition to harder stuff. Uh, yes, you can use a dog. Has to be on a leash, hundred foot or less. Raven makes four thousand dollars crossbows. Who pays that much? People with four thousand dollars to spend, I guess. Oh, uh, we can wrap it up here pretty soon. Nothing against crossbow hunters, but I've shot one. But I've shot one that way last year, and plenty with rifles. My experience this thing this year with a compound was so much more exhilarating. Personal feeling though. Yeah, John, and that's I mean that's a valid argument that some I know people that are in favor of crossbows, you know, completely legalized is that um you know, and I don't know if it's statistically correct or not, but they'd say like hey compound bows have a higher uh, injury rate, you know, or or even like um you know, extend that conversation into traditional equipment. Like I know a lot of guys know people who hunt with traditional equipment and it's like it's, it seems like there's high odds uh, of 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 wounding the deer, right? And so, like, I, you know, we're obviously in favor of the most lethal weapon possible. So, I mean, it basically comes down to practice. Shoot a weapon that is lethal and, and practice with a weapon. Make sure you're lethal with it. <laughs> what percentage of bad shots are because guys see big rack and try to rush or force Ooh. a shot instead of slowing things down? I mean, yeah, a lot of it. I, you know, um, who, who wrote that one? Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, I think a cool piece of that too, um, and just because it's been very, very recent for me, is that uh, even though I haven't done it in a year, it was so muscle memory to lock in and just know that I was shooting that deer when he looked back over his shoulder. Like, I didn't even think about it. Like, like it, even trying to remember like, oh, you aimed at the last rib, he was quartered hard, you, you know, you just made a smooth drop. Like I didn't even think about any of that stuff. It just, um, there, I really believe that buck fever is a, a severe illness, essentially like people have it and I don't know how they'll ever get over it. So, um, you have to slow it down. It's like like anything people should practice. Like there's, there's breathing techniques and there's like, 
basic physical fitness stuff that really applies to, I mean, dude, yoga has done more. I don't do yoga really much anymore, but like mm-hmm. when COVID was going on and stuff, I couldn't get to the gyms and stuff. So sure. I did that and breath work was a big part of that. Yeah. Dude, I, I use that a lot when it comes to the moment, the encounter with a yep. mature buck. I'm instantly like, just trying to calm and it's funny because I catch myself coaching people that I'm with. Like when I'm with Corey and stuff, mm-hmm. I'm like, take a breath, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. I, literally, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, yeah. don't look them in the eye. Fo- the focus on this. Slow, slow your heart rate down. It's just like, it's maintaining, you know what to do. it's maintaining composure so that you can, you know, it's not like, it's not like you're, you know, you know how to shoot your bow. It's, it's instinct. Well, like, I mean, I was point. busted last night, hundred percent busted to the point where I was like, fuck, like I blew it. And I mean, I just kind of tucked myself down in and just, you know, mellowed out my breathing. And, you know, it was when I opened my eyes, like I had to get into full draw and have my shot. Like mm-hmm. it just, yeah, it just, it, it's a weird thing. Uh, here's the other thing. It's experience too, man. I mean, yeah. you're not going to go out your first, the first time, the first time anyone on this thing sees a 150 inch buck coming to him in bow range, you're a mess. It's, it's inevitable. John says, "Do you guys have farms lined up to hunt in Iowa when you when you draw next year?" Um, we're working on it, John. Uh, we we might. We know a lot of people in Iowa we're waiting for invites. Yeah, <laughs> uh, exotic mining. We have not tried beast broadheads. Tony, appreciate it, dude. Yeah, he's doing well, man. He um he's through chemo and stuff. Um, uh, he had prostate cancer. Uh, that was pretty bad. Went metastatic. So, uh, just working on several things there and keeping it in check and. Uh, shit, man, we're going, we're going to Kansas. Uh, he slung it. Both dads slung arrows. I mean, I, you guys have heard this before. If you listen to our podcast, both dads slung arrows last year. It was wild. We're going to be right back in. I, I, we're, uh, we're putting severs on their bows and I'm putting lighted knocks on my dad's bows so that I could find the damn arrow. We're trying to talk him into hunting with a crossbow and hunting out of a ground ball. ain't going to do it. And he ain't so. going to do it. Yeah. So, um, we'll see. Uh, DJ, do you think that they should revisit Kansas camera? Um, that's a great question, DJ. I, it, we've talked about this for a bunch of states. I'm in favor of whatever the Kansas residents want to do. If the Kansas residents say, man, we really should have uh, cameras back on public land, I'm for it. Uh, it obviously was a huge advantage to us to be able to have those out there to know we have zero cameras running this year. We have not had any pictures from Kansas since sometime last year, spring. Yeah, we're um, just we're just winging it. We don't Hon- know. Honestly, we're feeling kind of good. It feels good. We're feeling a little pulled away. From, well, now you, you shot one, so I mean, it's doors kind of opened up. But <sighs> yeah, I can breathe. You know, bit. we're like, dude, we're gonna leave our new Illinois farm to go to Kansas. But the, you know, you don't draw every year, and the dads really look forward to this. So it's Kansas has become when. Um, how long have you been going out to Kansas? Twenty sixteen, seventeen, six or seven years, something like that. When we started going to Kansas, um, Kansas was very much, I've been going on since 2013, very much like I go there to kill a big buck. Like that is why I'm there. Somewhere in 2018 or 19, whenever I think my dad came out with us, was the first one, it became more deer camp. And last year with both dads, it was ultimate Kansas deer camp. So, as much as like I'm hoping this year uh, we we kill big bucks or at least see big bucks or on them. Well, Kansas is a deer camp. Like we 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 can we both kill bucks this year, which makes it a little bit easier. But we can go into Kansas feeling good about like we want the dads to have a good experience, and then secondarily, yeah. it's like whatever. It's, it's about the dads. Like it's it's really a lot of fun because it's like you can't Kansas is just a, a whole separate beast. And like dude, before that, neither of our dads had hunted anywhere besides Pennsylvania. And so I, we try to prep them coming out there. I was yeah. like, dude, listen, like, I know you think you know what you're getting into, yeah. but, and you know, you, you can only prepare somebody for something like that for so much, you know, you, you just gotta, yeah, gotta, gotta get in it. Uh, let's see. Uh, amazing experience. Da, da, da. Yeah. Uh, appreciate it, Matt. Um, really? We got you into hunting, bud. Well, shit, man. I don't know if we started you off on the right foot there. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's up Matt said uh, loves the podcast and it actually got him into hunting oh word right on dude so see we're not against all new hunters um, Philip appreciate it buddy uh, thanks for chiming in Philip we appreciate that Later, dude. we're gonna check out here too before um, too long. Tony how is the owner still lives there oh uh, so I got to meet him today again um, 
awesome interaction. It was super appreciative first off of like us stay, you know, uh, in today's society, you don't know what people are going to do. And and we've held up to our under the deal. We don't bother him. It's his house. He does what he wants. Um, we had a really good conversation about the neighbors. He, the first thing he said to me is like, Hey, I, you know, I'm starting to see good bucks showing up. He's like, I think it's just, and it's a guy who's lived there for 70, 80 years. Um, the 50s. Yep. And then he, uh, he, when I told, I was like, yeah, I killed, a, I killed a big eight point last night. He was really pumped up about it. So yeah, it was cool. He came back over the skinning shed later on when I was cutting up the deer and we just bullshit it. So, uh, it's, it's going great. It was the right move. Um, he really is excited that we have the farm. Uh, DJ, only people have heard object to it or landowners that it doesn't affect. Yeah. Uh, man, DJ, the other thing that I, I hear about this whole Kansas thing is like, it's no different than the Kansas baiting thing. Like the people who have the most to gain are the ones that you hear the loudest. Um, John, just slow down. Yep, exactly. Pick him deep. Uh, 25. Oh, sorry to hear that, man. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, my dad is, is I'm 39. My dad's still my hero. So, you know, it was a, a big shakeup in our family when we heard about it. And, uh, you know, that's why Kansas deer camp is, is so special. Uh, transparently is even though my dad and I live pretty close to each other, just because schedules and stuff, Kansas and maybe a trip to o Ohio, um, is about the only time we ever hunt together anymore. And I mean, we hunted every day together growing up. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, it's dolphin as Kansas resident. I've noticed the amount of people walking around compared to Jesse. <laughs> yeah, brother. I have to, in fact, last year, I, uh, maybe, uh, I, I don't know. It, it's been really crazy in Kansas. The amount of Kansas residents we're seeing hunting public land is just awkward. I've never seen that in all the years I've hunted in Kansas. Uh, just because I think there's so much land and people know each other and you can get out there and hunt. Uh, there, the, le the leasing, I think, is probably the biggest issue. The leasing issue is, is pushing a lot of residents on the public land and, and something sure. probably needs to change there. Ba the baiting thing would do it. But again, you know, whatever Kansas residents want is, is what I'm for. Uh, John, you're a non-resident uh, landowner, a uh, couple Iowa farms. If interested in an invite, welcome to follow up. Wayne and Decatur. Uh, appreciate that, John. And, uh, obviously. Sorry, what? We don't. <laughs> Did you get invited to a farm in Decatur? Yeah. Um, you know, we'd never take advantage of anybody, but that really do appreciate, appreciate it. it. It's, uh, I mean, it's a once in every six year thing for us. And we've, um, we've never been. Never been. Yeah. We're excited and we'll make the most of it for sure. Um, Chris, yeah, uh, we, I know it's been requested before. We'll see what the dads can do here, um, on the, uh, on the podcast in Kansas. I think we can pull it off. Um, but I just got to check some things. I got to write. What was the question? Uh, they, they want the dads on the show. We'll do it in Kansas. Why not? Well, I just don't know what, what our internet's like. Oh, if the internet's not good, then yeah. Yeah. Uh, or we'll just set up a pod and record it and then post it. I don't know. We do that too. Whatever. Um, Conrad, what poundage do you guys shoot? Uh, Jared shoots an abnormally high amount. 80. That. 80. Yeah, that's high. I shoot 70s. Um, I've, I've shot 70 for as long as I can remember, to be honest. It, you know, probably since I started shooting. I shot 65 at one point with a prime. Um, but I've been shooting 70 on Hoyts for a long time. He says, do you think Hoyt compound bows are the best? To I mean, it, it's preference at the end of the day. I know that Hoyts have like, I think the one of the highest price tags of not the highest, but uh -huh. I mean, yeah, they, they shoot good. Yeah. I, I mean, yes, transparently we are sponsored them, by them. Um, I killed a lot of bucks with Matthews in the past. I, I killed my biggest buck with a carbon spider in 20, mm, 2014. Uh, I killed a 175 inch buck in Kansas with my carbon spider. And I went to Matthews after that, I think. Um, and I killed some bucks. I killed that big PA buck. And I killed that with a prime. I went to prime. Then I went to Matthews. Uh, and I'm, I came back to Hoyt. I, those carbon bows, um, there's just something about how smooth they are and they're shooting and dead in hand. I just, 
I really like. And we, we I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast. I did an, uh, a speed test on my bow, my, my exact setup with that RX-7, 70 pounds, basically 29 and three quarter inch arrows, 125 grains. I was 288 or something, 287. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't, I the last time I did my my Matthews and and I think even the Prime I was in like the two sixties and that was with a hundred grains. So uh, transparently, I'm sure you can, you can kill a ton of deer with a lot of bows. That Hoyt with my setup and that sever yesterday was freaking impressive. That's a forty three yard shot, guys. I've never shot a deer that far. Forty three yards, quarter away, and buried that arrow. I mean, straight through a mega bucks cavity. Sean, appreciate it, brother. He's gonna punch it. Guys, film your hunts. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we we've tried, man. It, there's there's some videos from uh, Dakota two years ago, I guess. Um, I don't know. It's tough, man. We we just we con we just kind of enjoy this having these discussions and telling the stories and yeah, and maybe at some point it it's on it's on the docket. Kyle you, says, "What's your guys' dream buck? Like typical or double draft? I don't know, man. It's it honestly probably comes back to you know the, the stories behind them are what mean the most. Do you have a do you have a dream buck like that you've seen and like didn't get or anything? No, really. Well, yeah. I mean, goose was yeah. it for me? That's what I was gonna say. Yeah." Yeah, but, but that was because of the situation. I mean, that situation was the, in history. That was the first big buck on our Ohio farm, mm-hmm. you know, and I just, I had so much history with him. I passed him as a three year old. He was 160 inch when he got killed? 70. It was 170. It was 170. Wow. Clean 10 point. That, um, is as much as I would normally go to like, oh, that Ohio buck was my dream buck, that 200 inch I chased, and I have a lot of history with that deer. I would say wide boy is, and that's because I got a shot at him and, Exactly. And beefed it. Yeah. Th- those, you know, the, you say like a dream buck, those dreams I think are built over, you know, time with history with, mm-hmm. with your and like the people you do it with and stuff. And yeah. I mean, I could tell you right now that this buck is going to be on that radar. I mean, that's that point. Obviously that's the f- first buck that Jared and I will have killed off of this farm of probably many. And we killed it together at Illinois deer camp. And then we get to have this live podcast with you guys the next night. Like, yeah, pretty freaking awesome to be able to do that kind of stuff it, it really is man I mean, we, we don't hunt for a living <laughs> well dude even that that buck that i killed in north dakota this year like i mean for, yeah. for a lot of north dakotians guys that go out that's there, a buck of a lifetime it's a buck of a lifetime and like dude i that that is that is a dream buck and i didn't even know it yeah like, i didn't know it until i killed it that yeah. i was like this the experience that i had out there and like you know, if you guys listen to that podcast, like the friendships that were built during that, and uh, th- that was that was buck of a lifetime for me. Uh, da, 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 cool miles. Uh, last thing, PA but uh, personal best buck, 2012, 22 inch. Yep, Matthews in public in Pennsylvania. So it's uh, I just kind of mentioned it. My personal best is a, a little over. It's 175 and three eighths. Uh, is the Kansas buck I kill with my bow. My best buck ever, though, is I killed a 162 and 38 inch buck. Jared was there with me to find it in Pennsylvania in 2017. And that is the best buck I've ever killed. I've never seen any deer. That's the like high that score deer? It's not the high scoring deer. Oh. It's just my, that is the best deer I've ever killed. Oh, yeah. yeah it's yeah. just, I've never seen a buck like that in a state like Pennsylvania. Yeah. Personally, I mean, I know that people are killing bigger ones, but we should do. I mean, some we we kind of <laughs> people probably like to see deer that we kill. Like mm-hmm. we put them on there at some point. We did those. Um, I don't know if you, do you guys watch some of the what do we call those? Yeah, shorts or something. Profile no, profiles, buck profiles. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys watch? Uh, we we like doing those. Those were kind of cool, like just recollection type um, stories on some of the bucks that we've harvested in situations. So. That's probably as close as we get to film and hunt. We'll do some of those again. We'll do some of those profiles oh, and see. break them down. Your cousin killed the PA record typical help for years. Ivan Perry Buck, if anyone wants to search it. Taken in Pennsylvania. Wow, dude. That's crazy. Uh, there was a 190-inch typical killed not too far from where Jared and I are at in Greene County a few years ago, which was a giant. Tony, screw the videos. The stories in the pod are always the best. That a boy. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know... It, it, Obviously, we this this is our Illinois deer camp. Just eventually, we'll have like our own place uh, on the property and stuff. But um, 
uh, our no, can't, we, no, we don't, Justin. We score all our own. Yeah, our can't. My wife is actually an official Boone and Crockett score, but I don't let her score my hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, She's like, Jeremy, that is not six inches. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Officially scored. You're sure? <laughs> um, our Kansas camp. So we actually stay mm-hmm. in a uh, stay in an Airbnb in Kansas as well, but it's the landowners that we lease from. So we're on the property, and it's pretty freaking magical because uh, we get to come back to like the property, one of the properties we hunt, uh, and and eat and drink and. If you know, you, so, you need a good place to stay, man. Like the hunt is, I, I used to, we've stayed in hotels and stuff and it's pretty miserable. <laughs> and I, if it came down to it, I would sleep in the truck. Like I would, you know, you'd got to do whatever you got to do. But at some point, like you want to, you want to have a nice place to come back and like, Sheridan and I do out. fifth wheels when we go out to the Dakotas usually. Um, you didn't this year cause you stay with Lucas, but when we, when we go out, we, we sit in fifth wheels and, um, but yeah, the, it, it's always, and we've got all of my properties, I guess including this one, like all my properties have houses and structures on them. Eventually, we'll this will be our deer camp. <laughs> when I hunt in Ohio, I stay at my parents' house, and my mom cooks dinner for me every night. <laughs> pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> so, well, listen, guys. Uh, first off, super appreciative of everybody jumping on Halloween night for this live podcast. Blown away by the number of comments. Um, and That's pretty cool. It, it's uh, we've been meaning to do this for a while and engage with you guys, and and we literally. Like I see names on here. Like I, I, we recognize yeah, them. I see them too. We, we know that you guys watch stuff. I see you. I see you. Uh, you know, we know that you watch stuff. We, we really appreciate the support and, and the backing on it. Um, you know, we're, we're going to keep doing this. We have a blast doing it and, and sure. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that we all agree and disagree on. That's the whole point of the podcast. Like, uh, ultimately we want people to have fun with it. We love hunting and deer so much. It's, it's disgusting. Our wives probably hate us for it, but it's, it's really what we're passionate about. And that's what this, this kind of podcast has been. And, you know, you guys, um, it, it's, it's a little bit overwhelming, honestly. Um, yeah, Sean, a hundred people at Eastern, like that's pretty wild. It's a little bit overwhelming to know that like, there's that, there's this many people that actually watch our shit. Um, if you guys have ever, my dad loves your shit. (laughs) If you guys have ever gotten, uh, bored and you go back to literally episode one, it's pretty pathetic. Um, like I don't, my mic wasn't even working. Um, but you know, we, we really do appreciate everything guys. And we're going to keep things cranking. Um, Jared's got all day tomorrow and Thursday morning here. Then we head back home, uh, you know, get honey i got the kids this weekend emily's going on a on a running trip so i'm going right back to ohio then we're going to turn a burn right back to. i'm probably going to stuff the kids in a tree stand or a blind with me and we're gonna we're gonna hunt deer you guys want to come shoot some does in ohio no no okay (laughs) it's the (laughs) right that's true uh maybe (laughs) later (laughs) uh i asked a question the other day i said you're you're your way to pennsylvania he's like no no, dude no what are you talking about um (laughs) so yeah i mean Here's the crazy thing. Tomorrow is November 1st, guys. Like, if anything, this thing is about to get wild. It's the best time of the year. The next three to four weeks are are magical from the rut to traditional gun seasons, like deer camps, whatever you've got. We live for the next four weeks. Um, And so, you know, be safe out there. Enjoy it. Um, we'll keep you posted here in Illinois that honestly, if if you want to know, we don't do real time stuff, but if you want to know what we've got going on, um, check out our Instagram. Uh, in fact, we have a pretty long chain of Instagram stories here from the last couple of days with Jared and I've just kind of been posting when we can get to post. Um, but that's the best way to keep up with it. Uh, next Tuesday, which is, uh, November 6th, I think it's today, Tuesday. Yeah, I don't know. It's November. I think it's November six. Uh, Mark Drury podcast. Yeah. So another giant buck killer on the podcast, Mark Drury, and uh, but yeah, we'll be in Kansas then the following. We leave Friday into Saturday, so uh, we'll we'll figure something out here. You'll see a uh, a teaser come up if we can figure this out. You'll see a, a Jared and Dad's uh, at Kansas podcast live i guess so a lot of things will make sense after that one probably (laughs) yeah but uh 
honestly super encouraging so we'll make sure that we do these again guys and you know feel free to keep commenting send us your messages and in, in instagram and stuff we we appreciate the support and what up Pooja? better late than never uh, we're about to wrap it up dude yeah it's freaking midnight dude go to bed, <laughs> <Get a> bed. <laughs> if you have a job yeah get a bed <laughs> um but no we appreciate it guys and uh yeah we'll we'll catch you on the next one later